Okay. Uh, I, we're back, and I think I've got I think I've got sound here. Can anybody hear me? Yeah, the sound should be going crazy right now because I'm so close. Uh, I guess I'm going to wait. I guess I'm going to wait. Am I am I on? Can anybody hear me? Hello, is this thing working? Is this thing on? Can you hear me now? Testing, testing. Is this thing really loud or is it just barely working? I get just a tiny fidget on my monitor. But it says I'm doing something. Does it sound really close? Or do I sound the same here? Hello? 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 All right. Well, somebody's here. If somebody's there, tell me if I have sound. Can you hear me? Am I okay? I need to know. I need to know. I need to know. If I'm going to be heard, then you got to tell me so. I need to know. Yeah, I won't even bother starting the, uh, I wouldn't even start the show again until I find out if I'm being heard. Because this is uh, perturbing. I'm not getting much, uh, much monitor on my uh, screen here. So I'm kind of lost. Uh, I'm kind of lost. Why is it that I'm not getting much sound? Uh, I'm not getting much sound. Uh, yeah, baby. Is that a mute? I don't know what the hell it is. What the hell is that? All right. Here I sit, broken hearted. Uh huh. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe I'll just share this over to uh, Facebook here, really quick. Uh, Live, baby. Am I live again? There it is. Part two. Part two. Uh, so let's do that. Grab Facebook. Uh, message. And then I'm back, baby. Exclamation point. Can you hear me now? Oh, right on. Right. Am I clear? Am I loud? Is this really loud? Yeah? Right on. Okay. Uh, let me turn that down a little bit there. And then let me finish off reposting this so I can get uh, the other weirdos back on board here if anybody wants to stop by. All right. There's that. And then I guess what we'll do is we'll go back to the, we'll go back to the show. Right? All right. We got that on. Let me mute this uh, stereo behind me. So it doesn't come through my microphone. Okay. I think we're ready to go back to the show. So we're going to join the show already in progress here. Okay, so we're not getting anything from the uh, from the radio show there. So that's bogus. That's totally bogus, man. All right, let me let me go back to the old drawing board here. So it's coming out of my phone. 
you're going into there. And then if I push play with it off mute, it still don't work. Arg. Let me turn my phone up. But we can expect our children to respond, to learn and grow, if we ourselves are indifferent to their school environment. CBS Radio urges that you write to Better Schools, 9 East 40th Street, New York 16, New York, can we for hear information that now? about how citizens can spark community action to improve their schools. That address again is Better Schools, 9 East 40th Street, New York 16, New York. Now, Act Two of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Big Scoop Matter. I tell you, I didn't leave this apartment last night. Your car's differently, Joan. Car. You had it washed today because it was all muddy. And the reason it was muddy was because you had it out in the rain last night. Look, Another I... thing. You told me you didn't know Art had gone to the lodge. You hadn't heard from him. But the switchboard operator told me you had a call from him yesterday. Now, why else would he call you except to tell you where he was going? Well, how about it, Joan? All right. Art did call me yesterday and told me he was going to Lake Watika. And how about last night? Yes. I went out, but not to Lake Watika. Art wouldn't give you a divorce. By killing him, you get your freedom and a hundred thousand bucks. I didn't kill Art. I didn't go up there last night. And where did you go? Might as well know. The reason I wanted a divorce from Art was because I found someone else. Oh, that's where I went for a few minutes last evening. Why did you lie about the phone call from Art yesterday? I don't know. I don't know. I was confused. I was I was afraid it would look bad for me if it came out that I knew Art had gone up there. It doesn't look good for you this way, believe me. Johnny, I'm telling the truth. Who is this fellow you're interested in? I don't see why he... Who is he? His name is Ted Nash. You have to talk to him. I sure will. And right now. But I was wrong about talking to Ted Nash right now. I called his apartment and got no answer. Item nine and dollar sixty cab fare to police headquarters in the office of Detective Lieutenant Rastelli. You figure this guy Nash and John Wesley could have killed Art and used a gambling syndicate threat as a cover, huh? It's a possibility, Lieutenant. Well, I'll see what I can find out about Nash. How'd you do at Lake Watika? Two guests checked in the day of the killing. One a man named Buckley. He left early this morning. Sheriff Tompkins has a bullet knot on him. Who else? A fellow named Cooper, who apparently likes to go places in the off-season. Nothing to tie him in particularly. Cooper? We had a rumble some time ago that a guy named Cooper was involved in that gambling syndicate. What? Trouble is, we got no proof. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? I told me he'd put the name of the man he was after in a safe deposit box. If we could find the key to that box. How about Art's apartment? Let's take a look. So we looked, and we found the key, tucked away in a desk, but only a number on it. Nothing to tell where it was located. I gave it to Lieutenant Rastelli, and he promised to check every bank in town if necessary. While I went on back to Lake Watika to see if the man named Cooper at the inn was the same one Rastelli told me about. When I got there, after a frantic three-hour drive, I found him comfortably sitting by the fireplace. Well, uh, Mr. Dollar, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Cooper... I'm going to get right to the point. You told me you came up here to enjoy the scenery. Yes, it's fine. Why? The man who was killed last night, Art Wesley, he was trying to expose a national gambling syndicate. Oh, that's very interesting. So? So, I know a police detective in New York who thinks you're a member of that syndicate. Well, now, Mr. Dollar, that's a very serious charge. I presume you have proof. Well? Ah. Uh. No proof. Well, in that case, I don't Mr. think there's any... A long-distance call for you. You can take it on that phone right beside you. Thanks, Clark. Johnny Dollar. Mr. Tommy, talk, Johnny. Hi, Lieutenant. Did you locate that... Yeah, the deposit box. And in it, we found the name of the man Art Wesley was closing in on. It's Cooper. Thanks very much. Oh, Cooper, you want a proof? We've got it. Evidence that ties you in with the syndicate. Clerk. Well, this is ridiculous. Is it? Let me tell you the facts about this is, thing. Is, is something the matter, Mr. Dollar? Get Sheriff Tompkins on the phone, Clerk. Tell him I've got Art Wesley's killer here. You mean Mr. Cooper? Oh, no, wait a minute. Now, look, Dollar. 
Now, if you'd get your facts straight, you'd drop this silly notion of yours. What kind of facts, Cooper? What time was Wesley killed? Between 10.30 and 11 last night. But, Mr. Dollar, Mr. Wesley's place is some six miles from here. That's right. Why? Well, then Mr. Cooper couldn't have killed him. What do you mean? Last night, I took a drink to Mr. Cooper's cottage here at the inn. What time? 20 to 11, and I chatted with him for at least 15 minutes. Are you sure about that? Oh, quite sure. Well, Mr. Dollar, I'll buy you a drink, so Cooper strolled back to the bar with a satisfied smirk on his face. So the one man who had to be Art's killer couldn't have killed him. I collared the clerk again and had him repeat his story in detail. If you recall, it rained heavily last night, Mr. Dollar. Yes, yes, I drove through it on my way up here. Well, I was making the rounds of the inn, checking windows, things like that, when the house phone rang. It was Mr. Cooper calling from his cottage. He wanted a drink. You say that was at 20 to 11? Yes, I always jot down the time when I am called away from the desk. All right, go on, go on. Well, when I got to Mr. Cooper's cottage, he was sitting in the living room in front of the fire with a book. Yeah. We chatted a while, and then when I returned here to the desk, I jotted down the time again. 10.55. Well, that does it. What do you mean? Oh, it's a good 20-minute drive from here to Art Wesley's lodge. If he was killed between 10.30 and 11, and Cooper was here at that time, he, he couldn't have done it. Well, I'm sorry, but facts are facts. And... Oh, excuse me. Lake Watika Inn. Uh, yes, just a moment. Sheriff Tompkins, Mr. Dollar. Oh, thanks. Hi, Sheriff. Thought you ought to know, son. Remember that man Buckley? We were... Yeah, sure, the other guest at the inn. Yeah, we picked him up. I've been questioning him for an hour. Any luck? No, sir. He's just a traveling salesman who stayed at the inn because he didn't want to drive in the rain. You sure? Clay swears he doesn't even know Cooper. It's between you and me, Johnny. I think we got the wrong fella. No place again. I decided to start all over. Got into my car and drove to Art Wesley's place. Nothing was changed. I remember the trip I'd made the night he was killed, how it rained heavily until about half an hour before I arrived. How I'd found him lying in the open doorway, a bullet hole in his head. Yeah, and the hole in the ceiling over the shelf of provisions, marking the path of the bullets. It was there. So were the provisions. Canned food, mustard, sugar, package of crackers. There was some... Wait a minute. Sugar. The sugar bowl. I stared at it for a moment. I remembered a couple of things the room clerk at the inn had told me. And suddenly the whole deal slid neatly and quietly into place. I drove back to the inn fast. Cooper's cottage was empty, so I went inside to the bedroom and took a look around. Then I spotted one of the pictures on the wall, a little out of place. I looked behind it. Yeah, just what I expected. Outside, I found Cooper sitting on the terrace in front of the main building. I slid into a chair across from him. Well, Mr. Dollar, what fantastic crime are you going to accuse me of today? Cooper, I got a one-track mind. And it's still stuck on murder. Oh, now, look, Dollar. We've been over this before, and personally, I, I find it quite boring. So much so that it's interfering with my vacation here. That's too bad. Yes, it is. So I'm leaving this evening. I don't think so, Cooper. Oh, come now. Art that... Wesley was trying to expose a figure in a gambling syndicate. You. Well, that's a matter of conjecture. You had to stop him for keeps. Oh, now, look, Dollar. The time of Art Wesley's death has been established as between 10.30 and 11 last night. That's right, between 10.30 and 11 last night. And I'm sure you remember the room clerk telling you he was with me in my cottage living room from 10.40 to 10.55. I sure do. So that I certainly couldn't have killed your friend Wesley six miles from here during that time. Except that Art Wesley wasn't killed at his lodge. What are you talking about? You see, I remembered something else the clerk had told me. The night of the killing had stopped raining a little after 11.00. All right, what difference does that make? All the difference in the world, believe me. Here's what really happened, Cooper. You killed Art Wesley in the bedroom of your cottage here at the inn. I don't mean to You immediately called the room clerk over and chatted with him in your living room for about 15 minutes. He didn't know there was a corpse in the next room. Oh, really? After he left, you took Wesley's body the six miles to his place and planted it in the doorway. Well, now, look, Dollar... The problem was to make it look like he'd been killed there. 
Then you remembered. The slug that had killed him hit the wall in your bedroom. That gave you an idea. You figured out the right angle at the lodge and fired a shot upwards from the outside the door. It went through the ceiling at the back. All right, Dollar, I've had enough of your half-baked theories with no proof whatsoever to back them up. Correction, Cooper, this time I've got proof. There was a shelf of food under the bullet hole and a bowl of sugar directly under it. A bowl of... So what? When sugar gets wet, it gets crusty and it stays that way. But the sugar in that bowl was dry. Now, if the killing was between 10.30 and 11 and it rained heavily until after 11, then some rain would have dropped through the bullet hole into the sugar. I see. But, Cooper, the sugar was dry. So the bullet hole was made after the time of the murder when you planted Wesley's body there. Just a little detail, Cooper, but it nails you. That and, of course, the fact I found the slug that really killed Wesley just a couple of minutes ago. Oh. Buried in the wall of your bedroom behind a picture. You'd move slightly to cover it. Well, Dollar, I may as well tell you that I saw you come out of my cottage a few minutes ago. I figured you knew. So ever since you sat down here, I've been holding a gun on you under the table. You know, Cooper, I may as well tell you. Ever since I sat down here, I've been holding a gun on you, too. Wait. 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 Well, you... You didn't have any gun. Big-time gambler. Bluffed right out of the game. Cooper, you're slipping. Item 10, 3750. Transportation and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $187.40. Remarks? Cooper's awaiting trial. About Art Wesley? Well, I guess that sugar bowl was a dead man's revenge. And come to think of it, that revenge was pretty sweet. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Our star will return in just a moment. In days long since gone by, one had to go out in search of daring do. But in a fast-moving world, exciting things are happening right around the clock. Things you can be in on no matter what else you're doing, as long as your radio is nearby. With CBS Newsmen on the job, you can make CBS Radio your listening post for world events. Stay tuned now for five minutes of CBS News to be followed over most of these same stations by the FBI in Peace and War. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, colorful New Orleans, from nightlife in the Latin Quarter to the dismal deadly swamps. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Jackson. Tonight's cast, Virginia Gregg, Russell Thorson, Marty Phillips. Stacey Harris, Larry Thor, Harley Bear, and Wes Tremaine. Totally. By Amerigo. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Dan Cumberly Speed. Well, there you go. And there we have it. Johnny Dollar. One of my favorite uh, radio series. I'll admit I've only heard a couple of dozen of these shows. Uh, out of the few hundred that there are, but um, they're definitely some of my favorites. I like the character, you know. Everybody knows Johnny Dollar doesn't carry a gun. He's an insurance investigator. He's not a a PIE ain't a private dick. Uh, <laughs> the sugar bowl was dry, <laughs> and the sugar bowl was dry. What, there, there you go. Crime solved. There's a dry sugar bowl, so that cinches it. <laughs> Mm. Too much. Too much. Too much. Yeah, I really, I really dig these characters. There's another one. Um, I'll have to dig up. Uh, that's called Nightbeat. Nightbeat. Uh, and that's a great one. It's just a uh an investigative reporter who has the night beat. So his beat is going out and finding out what's going on at night. And uh, sometimes he just talks to people. A lot of times there's always some kind of weird, mysterious case going on that he's got to 
he's got to solve, you know, and he's just a, he's just a reporter. But Nightbeat is another great one, very much like Johnny Dollar. I like these detectives. There's just a million of these very cool um, detective noir type shows. You know, I saw the dame sitting there. She was great. She had gams that went all the way up and all the way down, you know, and they just ramble, 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 ramble. It's fucking hilarious. I love it. Uh, so, yeah, yesterday uh, I got bogged out of picking up my uh, painting stuff. And so I came home and uh, put together some shows, these shows that we're listening to today. So I put these in. Basically, I just find photograph and some graphics and uh, the audio and then just edit it all together. So you get a cool, you know, kind of a cool thing. Uh, that's why we got this uh, this graphic here. I created that. That took me about oh, 15, 10 or 15 minutes to put this together, find the photograph, and then uh, and then pick out the graphics. Uh, and these graphics are actually colored, but because the, it looks better in black and white with this particular photograph, I kind of uh, did a black and white with everything on it. Uh, and I really love this. It looks like it's an old photograph from back in the day, but it's not. It is a reproduction photograph. It's one of those things uh, like my room here, right? So my room here is a reproduction. You know, all of most of the shit in here is from the 1970s and 80s, mostly the 70s and 80s. There are a few things in here that are 90s, mostly my tech crap that's right here in front of me. That's mostly... Uh, and then a couple of guitars, musical instruments that are of today. But pretty much everything else in this room uh, is is of my day, my period. Uh, even like right over here, you see this little mag magazine stack in this little cubby here. Uh, those are all Time and Life magazines from the 60s and 70s. Uh, above that, I've got some uh, some Newsweek people. Uh, popular mechanics and stuff from the 80s. Uh, I've also got a few BAM magazines, B-A-M, BAM magazines from Hollywood. And it's just the, the magazines that show you what's going on, the local groups, the uh, what's happening at the Rainbow, the Roxy, the Troubadour, that kind of shit. Uh, so those some of those magazines there and TV guides and, and weird shit like that uh, are going to be some of those things that I'm going to give away when I do that 100 episode uh live drawing thing that i'm i'm planning uh and that'll be a lot of fun i'm just going to get on the air and i'm just going to do the same shit but i'm going to just do it indefinitely for an extended period of time until i get enough people on who want to do the drawing and then you know i'll pick a number you know okay we're gonna have as soon as we get this many viewers we're going to do the drawing you know and i'm just going to take uh everybody from my subscriber list which i i can only see 10 out of 74 so i don't know exactly who subscribed i also make a list out of the people who i talk to like you joel uh and then uh, i'll put your name on the list uh even if i don't see you in my subscription list because a lot of people do this incognito so i i don't know who's watching right uh, and that's cool too so i'm going to take people from my facebook friends list people from my subscriber list and then people that um that i've been talking to in the comments through various episodes and i just write the names down put them in a little piece of paper fold them up drop them in a hat or a popcorn bucket or something uh and i'm just going to pull a name out and then that name i'm going to get with that person and specifically curate a little package for that person you know what are your likes what did you what you know, if you were back in the 80s, what was your shtick? If not, what did you like? What do you like about the 80s that that, that it attracts you to the 70s and the 80s, you know? And if not, you know, what are you into now that I could, you know, that I could add to that with something from the past? So I got dogs that are milling around. Uh, oh, that's okay. It's, it's just my wife. Oliver! But yeah, I'm going to put on another episode. Uh, let's see. Now we have The Whistler is up next. And uh, that's another show. Wait a Back it up a little bit. There we go. 
Um, it's another one of those long live shows that was like on for hundreds of episodes, 30s into the 50s or something. It was just went on forever. And it just had some weird host. I think his, his name was Raymond or something. Uh, and uh, and he whistled. He whistled and he'd, and he'd tell a weird story. Uh, and then we were in on it because it was a lot. Of, it was very dramatized. Uh, so I'm going to put this episode on. Let me find the uh, let me find the graphics for this here episode. And. Uh, the whistler. <laughs> oh, wait, he doesn't do that. He whistled. I'm not. So that's going to that's going to boot up there. And then we are going to switch graphics and switch sound and watch uh, and listen to uh, The Whistler from uh, September 20th, 1942. Uh, This episode is called Fog. I know nothing about this episode. I did not listen to it when I uploaded it. I did not listen to it when I edited it. Uh, there was no need. I just had to sync up a few things. So I just heard a few seconds. Uh, I didn't want to take the excitement away from me as well as you. Um, I enjoy a good, a good, uh, show. And since I've heard every single one of the X minus one episodes and the dimension X, uh, I thought it would be neat to have shows that we could listen to together, you know, and, uh, and, and enjoy a new um uh, see i'm loading this up on my old computer here so it's taking a, a few minutes i believe what it's doing is it's downloading it from my new computer onto my old computer because they're linked now uh, i don't know how they did it themselves stupid tech shit does it all by itself what am i gonna do huh? i don't gotta do i just sit back and okay do it fucking do it uh and boom it fucking does it uh, so if it looks like I've got sound and everything again, uh, I'm going to switch a Roni here and we're going to watch my new graphics for the whistler. And we're going to listen to an episode that I've never heard. And this is a really good, show. I've heard probably a couple of dozen whistler shows. So here we go. Wait a minute. Have you heard the strange tales of the Whistler? I'm the Whistler. I was with Danny when it happened. But I couldn't hang on to him. He ran off and left me now. I've been looking for him ever since. That was Captain Fowler. Something had happened to his friend, Danny. I ain't going to no doctor at this time of the night. Tomorrow, maybe, but I'm not going tonight. That was Danny. Danny knew something had happened to him, but he didn't know what it was. But, Danny, you couldn't have done a thing like that. I know. Don't worry, Danny. That was Fairy, Danny's girlfriend. And this is Joe Rodriguez, a fisherman. Much better that I leave town, Danny. If I stay, I might forget I am your friend. (laughs) Sunday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, the whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the strange story of Fog. Well, Danny, my boy, this is the thickest fog I've seen in this harbor in many years. Mm Mm-hmm. And I've been a sailor man for a long time. Oh, that's right, Captain. Can't see a single light along the entire waterfront. But we don't need light for where we're going. I know the way to the anchor pool room. Yeah. Yeah, I know too. Hey, uh, Danny. You didn't bring your gun, did you? Sure I did. 
Fine. Now, wait a minute. Hey, I'm not going to let you talk to Duke Moran with a gun in your pocket. Why not, Captain? Well, you... You might lose your temper and do something you'd regret. Uh, what's the matter with you, Cap? I ain't going to shoot anybody. I just want it in case Duke Moran gets tough. Oh, sure. I know, I know, but if he gets tough, you can handle him with your fists. Sure. Unless he tried to slip a knife through my ribs. Well... Ah, uh, don't worry about the gun, Captain. I won't lose my head. <laughs> so Danny and Captain Fowler continue on their way toward the anchor pool room. Duke Moran's usual hangout, where Danny intends to have a showdown with Moran. But the captain is worried about Danny's gun, for he knows that Danny hates Moran to the core of his being. Now, look, son, I, I hate to keep bringing this up, but, you know, I wouldn't go storming up to the Duke and start raising the debt. He borrowed money from me, and he ain't kept his word about paying it back. I, oh, I know, my boy, but... Stay it back? No, oh, no, he won't. He's planning to skip town and leave me holding the sack. Now, look, you're working for me, Danny, and you're my best friend. And I, I'm going along to back up your claims because I was the witness when the loan was made. But look here, I, I don't want to see you in no trouble. Oh, I'll take it easy. But I can tell you one thing. Hey, look at that. Now. Honey, are you hurt? <laughs> That'll help you. No, that's it now. Easy, does it? Uh, up now. Uh, there. there. There we are. <laughs> Nasty spill. You just sit here for a bit. <laughs> oh, you you took a real header? Yeah? Huh? How do you feel then? Yeah. Better let me see if you cut yourself. Uh, hey, keep your hands off me. Who are you? D what? What is this? A stick up? Danny. Danny. Are you kidding? Go away. Get away or I'll call the cops. Danny, you're, you're out of here. Yeah, get away. Don't you know me? Oh, come back here. Go away. Come back. <laughs> Danny breaks away and quickly disappears into the fog. For a quarter of an hour, Captain Fowler searches the vicinity and finally hurries on to the anchor pool room. Hey, hey, any of you guys here in the pool room seen Danny Price? Oh, hello there, Cap. No, I haven't seen Danny. Neither have I, Cap. Don't think he's been around. Oh, see. Well, uh, is, is Duke Moran here? The Duke? He was here a minute ago. Where'd he go, George? Out in the alley, I think. Yeah, that's right. Some guy opened the back door and called him. Some guy opened... Oh. Uh-huh. But tell me, tell me, was it Danny? Uh, I don't know. I don't know either, Captain. We didn't pay no attention to who it was. Oh, I see. Well, good, okay, boys. Thanks. Later that night, groping his way along the waterfront, Captain Fowler arrives at the box office of the Crystal Motion Picture Theater. An attractive girl selling tickets. Hello, Faye. Well, hello there, Captain. Going to the show? Oh, no, not tonight, Faye. I'm looking for Danny. Have you seen him? No, I haven't. And I'm sore at that big lug, too. He promised faithfully he'd be here to take me home, and it's time to close the box office right now. Well, look, Faye, I, I don't want to excite you, but I, I'm going to tell you something. Danny's had an accident. An accident? Yeah. He fell down on the street and he tripped over a fire hydrant. And when he got up, you know what happened. He couldn't remember nothing. He was walking around someplace in a daze. Good heaven. Yes, I was with him when it happened, but I, I couldn't hang on to him. He, he ran off and left me, and I have been looking for him ever since. I tell the police? No. For heaven's sake, tell them, Captain. Maybe they can find him. No, Faye, I, I don't want to tell the cops. Why not? There's a certain reason, and I don't want to talk about it here. Look, you wait here till I check in the cash. It'll only take a few minutes. I'll be right with you. All right, Faye. All right, Captain, now tell me. Why didn't you notify the police? Because... 
Because Danny's got a gun on him. Oh. Yes. He was on his way to see Duke Moran. You know all about that money. Yes. He was afraid the Duke might start something. Hmm. You say you've been looking for Danny? I've been everywhere. Been to the casino, over to the bowling alley. Have you been to Fred's Cafe? I know. Well, Danny goes there for coffee sometimes. Well, all right. We will take a look. Fred's Cafe, why, it's in the next block, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, I tell you, pay, we got to find that kid. But he's like a crazy man. You know what he did? He looked me right in the face and he didn't know me. He couldn't. Captain, suppose his memory never does come back. I'm not pretty. Don't don't carry on like that. And don't you start worrying. Yeah. I know how you feel. You and Danny engaged to be married and all, but don't you worry. I think everything will turn out all right. Oh, I hope so. (laughs) What's your hurry, folks? Oh, well, sure it is. Yeah. Oh, where is up? I've been chasing you for a block. Oh, Danny. Are you paying? Oh, Danny. You're all right. Well, oh, sure. Sure, I'm all right. Except I, I, I'm kind of mixed up. All of a sudden, I'm sitting in the Clark Hotel. I don't remember going there at all. The Clark Hotel? Yeah. Well, so that's where you've been. Well, seems to me I, I was walking along with you, Cap. Of course you were, Danny. Don't you know what happened? You had a lapse of memory. Huh? Yeah, we've been worried to death about you. The captain and I were looking for you. Oh, Danny, I'm so glad you're all right. Oh, so I, I've been off my noggin. Sure. Don't you remember falling over that fire hydrant? Fire hydrant? Yes, that's what did it, Danny. When I helped you up, you, you thought I was a stick-up man. You run off down the street. Well, I'll be darned. How long ago this happened, Captain? Well, it's been an hour ago or more. You've been in the Clark Hotel all that time. Well, how should I know? When did you come to your senses, Danny? Well, just now. I'm sitting there in the lobby wondering what it's all about when I've seen you folks passing the window. Oh, swell. Look, Danny boy, you're going to a doctor right away. What do you mean, doctor? You said you must have struck when you fell. Oh, my God, all right. Oh, now, please, don't put up an argument, Danny. Oh, now, look. Hey, here comes an ambulance. Maybe I better flag it down and crawl in. Oh, huh? now, don't be smart. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's no ambulance. Well, it's a police car. Yeah? Yeah. Well, come on, never mind the police car. Danny, come over here under the light. Let me take a look at your head. Oh, now, look, Faye, I tell you, there's nothing wrong with you. Know? See where that car's stopping? Huh? Over in front of the anchor pool room. Yeah? Well, wonder what's happened there. I, I don't know. Oh, forget it. No, no, no I, I want to find out what's going on. Yeah, yeah, so do I. Come on, Danny, let's go over and see. <laughs> All right, all right, you people, get back now. Don't block the doorway. Hey, what's happened, officer? The guy's been killed. Shot. Yeah? Yeah. They just found his body out in back of the pool hall. Who was he? Do you know? Yeah, Duke Moran. Duke Moran murdered, killed on the very night that you, Danny, with hatred in your heart and a gun in your pocket, were on your way to demand your money. Could it be that after your mind went blank, you continued on to the anchor pool room? With your gun, Danny, if no shots have been fired, you're all in the clear. (laughs) Jedi. Come on, Danny, let's go. Well, how do you like that? A guy gets bumped off owing me a hundred bucks. Yep, and you can kiss that dough goodbye. And how? Captain, who do you suppose killed Moran? Well, how should I know? Didn't have any enemies that I know of. Except Danny. What do you mean, except Danny? I wasn't the guy's enemy. I, I just wanted my money back, that's all. Oh, sure, I know. You know what? That you just wanted your money back? What are you getting so excited about? Oh, let's walk down this way. There's no doctor in this direction. Oh, hey, will you let up on that doctor thing? I tell you, there's nothing wrong with my head. How do you know? Well, anyhow, I ain't going to no doctor this time of the night. Tomorrow, maybe. My head starts aching or something. Is that a promise? Okay, that's a promise. Hey, uh, Danny. Yeah? You know, I went to that pool hall right after you disappeared. I thought maybe I'd find you there. Yeah? Was I there? No, no, you wasn't. I asked about Moran, and they said he'd just gone out in the alley. Somebody opened the back door and called him. Why, Captain, you must have been there just before the murder. Sure looks like it. I'm sorry now I didn't go out and back and see who Moran was with. 
a shame you didn't. Yeah. Hey, uh, Danny, I, I've been wondering... All right, go ahead and say it. It was me that called him out the back. It was me that killed him. Danny. Well, that's what he's thinking, Faye. I can see it sticking out all over him. Honey, you mustn't say that. He knows I've been out of my head for an hour. Can't remember a thing, so now he's trying to pin a crime on me. Shut up, you fools. Shut up. Why should I want to pin a crime on you? That's what I'd like to know. What if you did kill Moran? I'm not holding it against you. You couldn't be blamed. You was off your nut. Well, I didn't kill him. How do you know? I didn't. I know I didn't. Yes, but how do you know? Oh, fix your head. Danny lost his memory, and that includes his memory of Moran and his grudge against Moran and everything. Sure. So now what do you got to say? Well, maybe that grudge was in the back of your mind, Danny. Even while your memory wasn't working. Uh, you see, Faye, he's bound to make out I did it. Oh, no such thing, but... Look, here, if you was mixed up in this murder, Danny, it's up to me to help you. I'm your friend. I've got to find out about it, Danny. Let me see your gun. Huh? Let me see your gun. Oh, the devil with you. Let him see it, Danny. That'll settle everything. Sure. Sure, he can see it. There you are, Captain. Thanks, Danny. Yeah. The barrel smells of powder. Are oh, you crazy? And two slugs have been fired, Danny. Look here. All right, so the gun's been fired. And that means I killed Moran, I suppose. You're crazy, I tell you. That's right, Captain. That gun doesn't prove a thing. He might have fired those shots anywhere for no reason at all. Sure, I've been out of my head, ain't I? Don't you worry, Danny boy. You didn't kill Moran. Of course I didn't. You couldn't have done a thing like that. Not even in a trance. So don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Don't worry, Danny. Uh -huh. Hey, she doesn't believe her own brave talk. Deep down in her heart, she's afraid. Afraid that Danny is a killer. It is nearly midnight now. Danny and Captain Fowler have returned to their boat, the fishing boat Dolphin in the harbor. Danny sits on the deck, gazing morosely into the fog. Hey, hadn't you better turn in, kid? You ought to get some sleep. Oh, I couldn't sleep. Stick here a minute, will you, Captain? I'd like to talk to you. Oh, sure. Sorry I blew my top the way I did when we was ashore. Oh, that's all right, Danny. I know you was thinking of my interest when you asked to see the gun. <laughs> sure I was. All kidding aside, it looks pretty much like I bumped off Moran, doesn't it, Cap? Well, Danny, to be honest with you, it does. Still, there's room for doubt. And if I was you, I'd lay low and say nothing. I know one thing. I could never be convicted of murder, even if I did do it. Why not? Because I was suffering from amnesia. <laughs> the trouble is, how are we going to prove that? How are we going to prove it? Well, couldn't you prove it? You was there when it happened. You saw me go slug nutty. Sure, but who's going to believe me? I'm your friend. They think I was lying to save your neck. Yeah. And I see what you mean. But things look pretty bad then, don't they? Ah, oh, you daddy. Don't go hanging yourself in advance. You know, maybe it's like Faye said. Maybe you just happened to fire them shots. Hey, listen. Hmm? I hear a motorboat. <laughs> so what? It's coming this way. Hear it? Well... Yeah, sure, sure, I hear it. It's the cops. They're coming here to ask questions. Oh. Now, I'm getting out of here. No, no, you keep your shirt on. I'll hail the boat and find out who it is. Now, you wait right here. Ahoy there! Who is it? Oh. Hey, well, Danny, it's only Portuguese Joe. What's he doing out here this time of night? Well, I don't know. Here is my life, Captain. You make me fat. Coming aboard. Okay, Joe. How'd you know we'd be up this way? Yeah. Hey, just a chance, Danny. But I am glad you are up. Oh, don't tell me you ran out of live bait again. Oh, no. I got plenty of live bait. Oh? <laughs> what can we do for you, Joe? Captain, I got a little business proposition I would like to talk over with Danny. And I would like to talk to him private. Private? Oh, no, wait a minute. Anything you got to say to me, you can say in front of the cat. Oh, no, Danny. This is private. Very private. Oh, see, well, that's your take it. I'll, I'll go below. I was about to turn in anyway. Thanks, you, Captain. Well, don't keep him up too long, Joe. You need some sleep. Uh, I'll just be a few minutes, Captain. Good night. Well, what's on your mind? Danny, I'm fed up with these town. Business is rotten here. We want to go to Seattle. Yeah. And I need a little money, Danny. Two hundred dollars. And I want for you to let me have it. Are you kidding? Ain't you got two hundred dollars? Sure. 
I have, but I'm getting married in a few days. I need every cent I've got. Oh, yeah? This sweet young lady who work at the Crystal Theater, eh? We'll be very happy with her, Daniel. Yeah, you bet I will. But you'll be much more happy if you give me the money so I can get out of town, Danny. What do you mean? I am your friend, Danny, and I do not wish to cause you any trouble. But I know something about you that nobody else in this world knows. Not one stone. Yeah? Yeah. Tonight I am in an alley behind the anchor pool room. There is much fog. But I can see a little bit because there is a light. I see you two to Moran. Twice. To the heart. Kill a dirty liar. So you see, then it's much better I should leave town. If I stay here, I might get drunk someday and forget I am your friend. <laughs> I may talk. Then it's no time in that photo yours and get back to shore. Go on or I'll throw you overboard. You come to see me tomorrow, huh? Before noon? If you don't come by noon, well, maybe I get drunk, huh? <laughs> Wait. There was no room for doubt now. I'm the guy that did it. How do you know? Portuguese Joe was an eyewitness. He was there in the alley, saw the whole thing. Oh, no, no. Wait Oh, that's right, Cat. A dirty rat came out here to blackmail me. Tried to shake me down for 200 bucks. Said I'd have to dig it up by tomorrow noon or he'd start talking. Well, I'll be darned. Good. Good, I guess it's time we started doing some fasting. Then. Now, that ain't necessary, Cat. I'm clearing out tonight. Oh, no, wait a minute. Don't get panicky now. Now, let's, let's give it some thought. Oh, no, I'm on my way, Cap. No fooling. Where are you going? I don't know. I'm going for good. I won't be back. You won't be. Oh, now, look here. What about, what about pay? What about your wedding? Well, that's just a broken dream, Cap. Yeah. At least you're, you're going to see her before you go, ain't you? No. Well, Danny, what's the matter with you? It ain't fair of you to run out on pay. It's the fairest thing in the world. Why prolong the agony? There's got to be a clean break. But Faye is such a grand kid. We'll wait for you. He's loyal. Yes, sir, Danny. After this thing blows over, you'll find Faye right here waiting for you. I don't want her to wait for me. And I ain't coming back. Can't you understand that? You think I'd marry Faye now? Me, a killer? Yeah. I know I love that girl. I wouldn't bring disgrace on her. And it would be disgrace. Even if I cleared myself of the charge, I'd still be a killer. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you would. Well, I guess there's no use talking to you. You won't listen to a word I say. No, Cap. I've made up my mind. I'm going to pack my grip now and go ashore. Hmm. <laughs> Aye, golly, kid. I sure hate to lose you. Yeah, I, I hate to go, too, Cap. You've been a prince to me. More like a brother than a boss. Well, all I can say is... Thanks, Danny. Even when you knew I was saving up my money to, to buy a boat of my own, to go into competition with you, you never said a word. <laughs> Why could I? Oh, this is a free country. Every man has a right to advance himself. And, uh, about Faye, I wish you'd explain to her. You know what to say. Well, not quite as good as good a talker as you are, Danny, but <laughs> I'll try it. You know something, Cap? I wish you and Faye would get married. I know you'd make her happy. Me and Faye? Oh, no, she wouldn't have me. Don't be too sure about that. She'll forget about me after a while. But explain things to her, will you? Well, okay, Danny. I'll try. I'll do my best. Well, I'm going to hit the first freight train out of town. So long, Captain. Mm -hmm. What are you doing here? Get a boat and go out to the Dolphins. Yeah? I've got some wonderful news for you. What? At least I think I have. What caliber is your revolver? Well, it's a thirty-eight. Thought so. 
Danny, you didn't kill him. You didn't kill Moran. He was shot with a forty five. Huh? Yeah. I just came from the police hospital. They took the bullet bullets from Moran's body. They were bullets from a forty five. Oh no. No, no, that can't be right. It's right, Danny. There's some mistake, honey. Look, I hadn't figured on telling you this, but there was an eyewitness to the murder. Portuguese Joe, the bait peddler. He'd just been out to the boat trying to shake me down for some hush money. Well, he's a liar if he says you did. Oh, no, honey, you got a bum steer about them bullets. Well, I tell you, I got a, a doctor. What's more, I've been to the Clark Hotel. The clerk said you were there for practically an hour, sitting by the window. That means you went there right after you left the captain, so you couldn't have been to the pool room. I'll be darned. Now, look, Faye, suppose you go out to the dolphin. Here, here, take this green. Tell the captain what you just told me. And tell him I'm paying a visit to Portuguese Joe right now. Who is it? Who is it? Who is there? Oh. Well, I wasn't expecting you so soon, Danny. You could just as well have come in the morning. I, uh, I want to get this thing settled. Sure, sure. Have you got any money? Joe, you didn't see me shoot Moran. Nah, Danny, I hope you're not going to put up no argument. You lied to me. And I'm here to get the truth. Now, look. Come on, admit it. You lied to me, didn't you? No. Oh, you shoot. I'm going to be the lowdown on this whole rotten business. Oh, now, stop talking. Yeah. The fog has lifted now, and the eastern sky heralds the approach of dawn. As Danny returns to the dolphin, he finds Faye standing on the deck. I thought you'd never get back. It's almost daylight. Well, I had a long ways to go, honey. Joe lives way out at the end of the Channel Street Wharf. That's where his bait shack is. Well, what'd you find out? Did you face him with his lie? I sure did. Is the captain in his cabin? No, he's not. He's uh, gone ashore. Gone ashore? Danny, there's something wrong with the captain. He's been acting very queerly. Yeah? When I told him he'd gone to support a good Joe, his, his face went as white as a sheet. Then he went over to his desk and wrote a note. He held it in an envelope and told me to give it to you when you come back. I'll bet I know what's in it. What? A confession. But I will need it now. I got one from Joe. Well, what do you mean? Honey, the captain's been framing. Framing you? Yeah, that's right. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Remember he said he didn't go out in the back of the pool hall to see who it was that called Moran out in the alley? Yes. Well, he lied. He did go out there. He saw the murder committed. He knew who did it. Why? Right then, he got a bright idea. He figured he'd make me believe I committed that murder. So I'd take it on the land. Get out of town. You see, honey? Uh, why would he do that? Because he was in love with you. What? Our wedding day was getting closer, and the captain was half crazy with jealousy. He wanted me out of the picture so that he could marry you. Oh, Danny, I can't believe that. It's true, honey. Joe told me. I'd have got a lot more out of Joe, too, only he broke loose from me and dived into the water. Last I seen of him, he was swimming away. Well, what, what about the murder? Did you find out who killed Moran? I got a hunch that Joe himself did it. After he left, I looked around his shack. I found an IOU there signed by the Duke. You did? Then the Duke owed Portuguese Joe money, too. Yep. I figured the captain made Joe a proposition. If Joe'd come here and make me believe I was the killer, the captain wouldn't squeal on it. Sure, Danny. That makes sense. Yeah, Better see what the captain wrote. Yeah. Open it up, Danny. Yeah. Dear Danny, I suppose you know everything by now. I haven't got the nerve to face you, kid, so I'll be the one to hit the freight. 
You won't need to save any more money for that boat. I've signed over the dolphin to you. You'll find the papers in my desk. Good luck, Danny. And make Faye a good husband. Yeah. The captain was the villain in our story. But wait. What about Danny's gun with the two empty shells? That doesn't fit into our solution at all. Or does it? Remember when the captain and Danny were on their way to the pool hall and Danny stumbled over the hydrant? The fog was pretty thick, you know. The captain didn't have a bit of trouble in slipping that gun out of Danny's pocket. He wanted to make sure Danny didn't use it on Moran. And later, after the captain had formulated his plot against Danny, it was a simple matter for him to fire a couple of shots from the gun and then slip it back into Danny's pocket when he met Faye and Danny on the street. Yeah. The fog sometimes has its advantages. <laughs> CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Tonight's Whistler story was written by Herbert Connor, directed by J. Donald Wilson, and originated from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next Sunday, same time, 9.15, I, The Whistler, will return to tell you the unusual story of... Jealousy. Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Well, there we go. Another great radio show. Um, I'm back, baby. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Uh, while I was away, I actually went and I found that, uh, that movie that I was talking about with Clint Howard, the, uh, the, whatcha, whatchamacallit, uh, evil speak is what it was called. And it is one of those freaky, freaky movies, uh, from the eighties. Let me give you a better shot of it here. No, that's not going to work. Let me go to this camera. There we go, baby. We got some light in this camera. So, there we go. There's, there's Clint. And this is the front of the movie. Evil Speak. And it's uh it's listed as a horror movie. But uh man, this it was a comedy to us. We used to just bag on this movie constantly. We just put it sometimes we just put it on with the sound off and just goof through the whole friggin' movie. Another um uh, another HBO special. We loved this movie. That when uh Up in Smoke. We used to do the same thing with Up in Smoke and Nice Dreams. We turn the turn the volume all the way off and just sit there and you know be goofy little kids and uh, and come up with all kinds of new dialogue and and funny shit. Of course, it was all stupid shit that only meant something to us. You know, if we recorded that stuff and I tried to air it, people would be wondering what the hell we were on because we would just talk some nonsense shit. You know, of course, every group of kids, every click always had their little uh, click speak, right? Words that only they knew, phrases that only a few people knew, uh, inside jokes. Uh, let me get this window back here. This window's crazy.
Totally. You can just feel the radiation leave the room when I close that curtain. Man. This this summer's going to be a scorcher, you know. It's time to blow out all the air conditioners. I think what I'm going to do after we paint um, is, is run some duct and install the, uh, the swamp cooler back on the side of the mobile because I think that's going to help cool this place off uh, the entire house. Uh, and it's going to be a lot cheaper because we don't have to have the air conditioners on all the time. Uh, it's nice only to use the air conditioners when the... Uh, you know, when it's not so uh, humid. Uh, well, when it's humid. When it's humid, that's when you use the air conditioners. Uh, the swamp cooler is great when it's dry. It just, it's it feels like an air conditioner. It gets ice cold. It's a, it's a beautiful thing on a dry day to come and sit in front of that swamp cooler. You just melt. You just melt. It's freaking awesome. So I've got one more show today. Uh, this one is, of course, X minus one. And uh, it's one of my favorites because it's a uh, Robert Heinlein story. The Green Hills of Earth was one of those stories I believe he wrote for like astonishing science fiction or a, a astounding science fiction, outrageous fantasy or something. There were just a million of these little, these little magazines and they were small. They looked like little paperbacks, just a little bit bigger than like a paperback novel, but, but thin. Uh, and they didn't cost a whole lot. Uh, I'm going to have to dig up some uh, some mags and uh, TV guides because those are kind of cool to, to check out. And I'm going to set up a camera looking down uh, at a table so I can set stuff out. And uh, just like we're looking at the graphics uh, from my other computer here during the show, I'll be able to tune in a camera and point it down and show you guys exactly what I'm checking out. And that'll be, that'll be freaking cool. That'll be awesome. Awesome sauce. Simply, simply sweet. Sip, simply sweet. I just got a list. It's too much coffee. I, it's, I sense my tongue. Mm. Oh, yeah, I stole more coffee from my wife. Because I can. Uh, uh, she gave it up freely. All right. I didn't beg. I just asked. Now let's see. We're just about ready to start the show over here. And then we'll start the show over there. And any second now. Any second now, we can go here, and you kind of see what I'm doing here. Can anybody tell me where that originally came from? Anybody? Anybody? Who was the originator of that? And on what late night television program did we first see it? And who performed it? Hmm? Anyone? Um, I'll give you a vintage TV guide if you tell me what it is. 
No? Nobody? No? All right. So let's see. We are about ready to go to Zipro guy. And um, all right, so X minus one. This one is uh, written by Robert Heinlein. I've got most of his books, most of his novels. He wrote a lot of teen stuff. Uh, and then as his writing got better, he started to write a lot for adults. Uh, the, the stuff he wrote for kids was really heavy. I mean, it talked about all kinds of weird, weird stuff. It, you know, he, he talked about... Uh, religion and politics and the use of drugs and uh social things uh i did yeah man take a nap bro um have a good one yeah man and then if i don't talk to you later have a have a nice safe trip down the coast man and check in let me know where you're at for the night let me know if you pass by lime kiln beach and and get a chance all right man have a good nap uh yeah yeah, Robert Heinlein, he really did a lot of uh, unique stories. Stranger in a Strange Land is probably his most well-known, although that one has not made it into the theaters yet. You know, um, Starship Troopers became a movie. The Puppet Masters became a movie. Um, yeah, I could, I, there was a, uh, rocket ship x to the rocket one of those moon one of those 1950s moon movies right we're gonna we're gonna go to the moon let's build us a rocket ship and it's just like that it's like a little rascal's production of let's go to the moon you know <laughs> i got some bailing wire <laughs> i got a 50 gallon drum <laughs> we're going to the moon <laughs> oh chihuahua what I love about 1950s science fiction is they look at, they look into the future, which is like our past now, right? And they look into the future and they were so, you know, uh, they had such a huge reach, you know? Of course, they didn't grab much. The future didn't turn out quite the way they imagined. Uh, I mean, it seems more like a, a Soylent Green world. <laughs> yeah totally uh all right so let's see i guess i can ramble on a little bit longer uh and then that will keep you guys occupied during uh the eight o'clock period there uh not that it matters much uh, i've got some other things that i can share with you uh, from the internet archive so we might hear some maybe some grateful dead right that might be neat uh, i went to a few grateful dead shows my first grateful dead show was in 1987 i'm gonna say uh, and uh i think the the following year or or maybe later on that tour um the first time we saw them was in irvine and then i think we saw them a little bit later on the tour up in santa barbara uh, my friend on his motorcycle threw me on the back and we drove up there uh and that was weird we hung out in somebody else's truck ate raw mushrooms, listened to the music coming off of the the, the ocean breeze because uh, we couldn't get tickets. So we went all the way out there and just hung out in the parking lot. And there wasn't a shakedown street, which was weird because you would have, you know, from what I know now about the Grateful Dead and what I learned after that, there, there should have been, there should have been a whole to-do, right? Uh, and this show didn't have that. Uh, it had some guy walking around selling mushrooms. That was about it. Uh, and and I've talked to a couple of people about that that period, and they remember those mushrooms. They remember getting some of those uh, some of those stinky mushrooms. 
uh, you think that my friend would have would have taken them out of the bag and dried them out, but now he left them in the bag. Uh, so you got these these mushy, raw, stinky, yucky mushrooms. You know, I mean, when we when we first got them, the the most we could tolerate was to to chop it up and stick it in a bowl and try to smoke it, right? And that was the best we could do with it when we first got them that day in the in Santa Barbara. But after that, I, I could not touch them. I couldn't tolerate them. Um, yeah, they were just horrible, horrible. Totally, dude. And I keep checking out my eyes. And this is just a horrible time of the day for me. But I think any time of the day isn't going to be good for my eyes. I mean, look. It looks like I got a black eye over here, doesn't it? Well, over here. It's just my sunken sockets. I get sunken sockets. Yeah, age, sickness, depression, poverty. It'll do it to you. It'll do it to you. I don't know. I'm I'm probably the happiest the last couple of years than I've been my whole life. So all of that past shit really doesn't mean anything anymore. It just doesn't mean anything anymore. Wow, I, I really love these. These new graphics, I mean, they're just so much, so much fun. You can look right up over the top of my bald head. You can see my father there in his uh, airborne army uniform there. And my reel-to-reel -reel and my lava lamp. It's not a bad picture. These, these aren't 4K cameras. They're supposed to be 4K cameras working with this stuff but i found out that as long as they're high def and they are uh hdmi they work they work pretty damn good which is great because monday night uh monday nights at some point i'm hoping that bush and i will join forces and work on this open mic together and he'll host and I'll do the tech and uh, and we'll bring you live stuff. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me. Oh. Let me see if I can. Uh, oh, I've got graphics waiting there. So let's see. What else was I going to let you know about? Uh episode playlist yeah so if you're if you're at some point if you tune in and you watch the beginning of this and you go what the hell is going on this is part two of this morning's show part one had sound loss after i changed my batteries i, I should have done it before the show uh and joel was nice enough to let me know before uh before i went on too long making a fool of myself so that was very cool. Uh, it's nice to have back and forth. Uh, adios, baby. Have a good day. Be careful. Drive safe. Tell the boys I said hi. Love you, baby. Bye-bye. And there's that. And there goes the missus. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really neat. I mean, this is the seventh day in a row on my show that uh, i've had back and forth uh, a lot of the time it's been joel because joel's on vacation uh and he's on the west coast so he's in my time zone he's up to he's used to staying up late which is really cool uh so i've got uh, an early bird hanging out with me uh, i see other people kind of popping in and out uh, mainly because with all of my keywords um and my settings and stuff, I pop out there on a lot of people's live, uh, live stuff, you know, uh, and that's cool. Uh, people don't have to understand this or watch it or get it, you know, except that I'm different, be courteous and move on. You know, if you got to hang around and, and say, Oh my God, what is this all about? This dude's a geek, man. Hey, you're a fucking geek. You know, I'll just delete your comments. I mean, that's all there is to it. You know, if you're going to come on and say fucking pro Muslim, you know, then uh, <coughs> you can blow me. Uh, only, uh, 
because this isn't any of that. This is this is not that. This is just about hanging out, me drinking coffee, doing bong hits, listening to shit, watching shit, doing shit, talking with people, talking about my past. Um, and most of my past happened, you know, in uh, in the seventies and eighties, uh, and and bits of the nineties. Uh, of course, like most of us, we settle down, we get married, we have kids, we have jobs and all that. And we kind of lose touch with all of that from our past. I'm reconnecting here. Uh, I'm reconnecting with my own past. I'm reconnecting with the past of others. I'm reconnecting with others. Uh, on occasion, I hope to get somebody on here from my past, uh, friends, family, acquaintances, uh, children of people from the past that would be way cool um i have my settings on this adjusted for it's not made for kids but it's okay for people under 18 right so there's like i think it's like 14 or 15 whatever the world's opinion of what uh, an adult is right that is where that starts like at 18 but over 18 you have to have a setting is this for under 18 or over 18 so there's that 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 little spot right in the middle like 15 to 18 just a few 14 or 15 to 18 just a couple of years like high school years right and uh, on youtube you're not a kid but you're not quite an adult right and i seem to be hitting a few people in that audience so i don't want to screw up my settings uh, I, i'm assuming that if they can watch a pg-13 movie and see guys smoking weed and and titties and and all of that stuff and foul language you know f-bombs and shit then my show should be okay right it should be okay for for the average pg-13 audience right i mean i don't advocate anything that i do for a younger audience right i don't promote doing any of the things that i do um, i'll talk about the things that i do and you know where i get you know the things that i do but mostly it's tech shit mostly it's old analog tech shit you know and i don't mind goofing on myself so if you're going to stop by to goof on me i'm supposed to bring it on I mean, I can take on, you know, uh, womanizing assholes uh, at an open mic night and, and be their worst nightmare as far as hecklers, you know. So if you got something, bring it on, you know. It's all in my channel name, right? Crazy old weird bearded guy. If you're going to comment on any of that, you really can't phase me. You just, you know, move along down the road. Move along move along uh. totally but anyway uh i am going to uh well i'm not going to be doing much because i'll have my main computer here live i'll have my phone playing the audio that you're listening to right and then I'll have my other laptop, my secondary computer, playing the video that you're watching on the screen. So they're not the same. They don't come from the same place. If I tried to play my any audio through my audio video mixer, the, the audio fights with each other, the analog, the digital, all that shit, all of the different components. They don't like each other. They like to have a little scuffle. And, and it, it's everything goes wonky. So, um, for now, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I got, I got two inputs an audio and a video and, you know, and they don't like to mix. So, you know, with, uh, with no more ado, I'm going to let this roll here and we'll go ahead and hit the, uh, the audio and what do we got here are we muted all right so we're on there all right people here we go x minus one from july 7th 1955 
countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction, presents... X, 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 X minus, minus, minus one... one, one. <laughs> Tonight's story, The Green Hills of Earth. The men who pioneer the trade routes of the world, the sailors of the clipper ships, the whaling men, railroaders, black gangs on the tramp steamers, all have their own stories and song about dangers and struggles of their lives. This is the story of Riesling. The blind singer of the spaceways. When I first met him, he was hustling drinks in the Twin Moons Bar at Dry Waters Mars. He'd won a guitar off a Chinese barkeep at Luna City by uh, cheating at one thumb. And he made his whiskey by singing in the bar and passing the hat. Hey, listen to a Hertzman. Don't you sing pretty? Like a 16-year-old gal. Yeah. Hey, uh, Riesling, look over there at the bar. There's an Institute for Striper giving you the ad, you know? Manner of speaking. Cold looking scoundrel, ain't he? Mm. Gives the idea he graduated Harriman Space Institute, three men above St. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? Captain Hicks off the go show. Yeah. Well, he sure gives you the once over. Maybe he's got a job. That don't make never no mind to me. I've been blacklisted. Hicks logged me for making up a song on watch. Right fight song, too. Oh, the skipper is a father to his crew. Yeah, well, well, hold on. Here comes a press arm. Oh, uh, Riesling, I've been looking for you. You've kept your nose clean, and we're going to give you another chance to get back to deep space. Been a little changing down there from the Gorshawk, ain't you, Skipper? How'd you know that? Uh, you got that new atomic pile drive. If there's been a leak at the shops, oh, I... I'll take it easy, Skip. You'll have that gold braid just crawling right up your arm. Quit stalling, Riesling. Take it or leave it. It's a loop trip to Jupiter with the standard release. I reckon. Double pay when you get back, if you get back. Last three of them atomic tea kettles blew somewhere in the asteroids. If you're scared. Scared? Well, that gosh hawk is one stinking old tub. Her engine's got more bugs than a beagle dog in spring. And her new drive's about as safe as a pretty gal in the Ozarks. But I reckon she'll do for one more trip. Welcome home, Riesling. Hi, Jimmy Link. Meet my friend Hertz. He can't hold his liquor no more than a sieve, poor boy. Riesling, you sober enough to sign the book? Drunk or sober, I make my mark. Can't decide. Three X's? Took me a middle name. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. You two lay below. And Hertzman, yeah? get him sobered up before the skipper makes rounds. <laughs> Cargo stowed, Captain. Fuel lines away and ready. Uh, good, Casey. Well, what's that? What it? Oh, that's a guitar, I guess. If it's that shoeless hillbilly, I'm going to tell him. Hi, Skipper. Riesling, what the devil are you doing up here? That number two jet ain't fit. Cadmium dampers are warped. Crooked like a turtle's back. Well, why tell me? Tell the chief engineer. I did. He says they'll hold. Well? He's wrong. Oh, he's wrong, eh? He's got a Harriman Institute degree in electronics and power. And some drunk space rat says he's wrong. Skipper, I was damping jets when that shirt tail Tad wore pins for buttons. I got no time for your reasoning. Scratch your name off the book. No, 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 don't get excited. Well, are you shipping or not? Reckon, I reckon. Then get below. That's all. Casey, sound take off. Aye, sir. <laughs> Uh, 
On a Hawk class clunker in those days, damping was done by hand with a multiplying vernier and a danger peeper. Jetman slept with one ear tuned to that, and as long as the peeper ticked off slow and steady, we knew the ship was sailing uh, for a while. Riesling, you better stow that guitar. If Jimmy Legs catches you, he'll blow a gasket. Don't worry, I could damp this tea kettle in my sleep. Yeah. How's number two? All right, so far. Say, did you ever hear that song about Hicks? The one that got me blacklisted? Oh, oh the skipper is the father of his crew. A gentle guide and light to me and you. <laughs> but on Mars, he likes his women if they walk or if they're swimming or if they got six arms instead of two. <laughs> Second verse is better. Yeah. <laughs> the skipper likes his liquor by the court. Yeah, he'd go from Mars to Venus for a snort. He'll drink rocket fuel and... <laughs> well, hi, Skipper. Didn't see you come in. Uh, you were uh, too busy, eh? Who's watching the gate? I got an eye on it. Don't you fret none. Reasonably, I'm going to fix it so you couldn't get a space berth on a rocket-powered pogo stick. You're locked. Report the casing under arrest. I don't rightly think I will, Skipper. You what? You kind of forget, Skipper. According to space code, you can't remove a jet man till the end of the war, right? You tell me I... I... Riesling, your ship is over at 2300. And I'll see you ride the rest of the way in slop locker. Maybe, maybe. In the meantime, you clear out of my power room. I'm going to make me up a third verse from a song. Yeah, I got it. Power room. Damp number two, a point. Number two, I... Hold on, Hurt. Jimmy Legs, is that four-stripe boil up there? Give me that, Casey. Riesling, I've taken about enough to you. And I got a little news for you, Skipper. Number two jet is bulging like a fat lady in a satin skirt. Listen, you clown. Damp number two, a point. Why, uh, sure. Look out, Hurtsman, I'll take it. You watch the gauge. <laughs> now. <laughs> He's riding easy here. He's bucking a little. Huh? What? Uh, Riesling, well, I can hit the emergency. All right. Uh, uh, she, she won't damn. It's that war. Yeah. Uh, let go the lights. Duck her down. Riesling. Riesling. Hey, don't be hurt, bad boy. Got to take a look. Pretty eyes. Right. Look out. This is the hot stuff out of the tube. Hold on, my man. Shut up, Jimmy Lane. I'm busy. Uh. Oh, she's tight now. What happened? Number two blew your lunk-headed space rat. You all right? Oh, a little sunburn. Lights are gone. What's the matter with the emergency circuits? Riesling, Ed. Jimmy Legs, get some lights down here. It's dark. Get the emergency light on. But they're on, Riesling. Well, they went on right after the blast. The lights are on. What are you talking about? It's dark. Jimmy Legs. Jimmy Legs, turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. Oh, I got it That blue, radioactive glow from the jets was the last thing Riesling ever saw. His optic nerve was burned out in an instant. He was in sick bay on the rest of the trip, and on the swing back, we set Riesling down at the dry water. I ran into Riesling about two months later, playing his guitar on a jetty that ran out into the canal. He had a dirty rag tied over his eyes with a jetman's knot, and his hat was on the wharf beside him. When he finished, uh, we walked out along the canal. Yeah, I'm doing right fine. Working saloons mostly. And I've been thinking some funny songs, Hurts. The words come out different than they used to. Come on along the canal with me. Sure. Here, take my arm. <laughs> I know the way. That's another funny thing, Hurts. I figure I know it better than other folk. Look back there. Toward the city. What do you see? Ooh. New factory building? Sure. You could smell them from here. And I still remember them old Martian towers, old before Bible times on Earth. Thin and graceful, like a, like a fairy palace, as my old Grammy used to tell about down home in the hills. Yeah, they torn them down now, or else blocked them up with cinder blocks. Hertzman, when I stand out here in the canal, I, I can see it the way it used to be. The water, ice blue, with the stars shining up out of it. Way off there, the city, with the towers sweeping up like a like a bird flying off a tree. I can see it. Now it's the dirtiest stink hole in the system. Not to me. Mm. Listen, Hertzman. 
Won't tie the race that braves the town. Forgotten are their lords. Long gone the gods who shed the tears that lap these crystal shores. Slow beats the time worn hunt of bars beneath this icy sky. The thin air whispers voicelessly that all who live must die. Mm. I can't figure myself. I never put words together like that before. I reckon it's just I, I got time now to study the words and shine them up in my head till, till they sing true. Why don't you go home, Richley? Home? Earth. I've been thinking about that, Hurt. When I was a young and down in the Ozarks, I used to climb a big old oak tree my daddy had in the dooryard. You could see the hills for miles, green and cool. I've been thinking about that. Well, why don't you go back then? Someday. Someday hurts me, but I, I couldn't face those hills now. I couldn't stand to see black when I knew they was lying all around me, cool and green in the sun. I, I couldn't stand that. Yeah. Well, let's get back to town, Hertzman. I, I made three and a half dollars march today. Now I'm all set to drink it down before dawn. Come on. <laughs> I lost track of Riesling after that. I shipped out in a slow freight of the Condor class for Luna. And he hits the hike to, to Venusburg and an ore ship in, a, in the Triplanet run. And so he beat around the system. Venusburg, Layport, to dry water to New Shanghai and back. Any spaceport was his home and no skipper refused to lift the extra mass of Riesling and his guitar. He made up his song, sitting out watches down in the power rooms with old shipmates, while the monotonous beat of the jets shook the whole place. Hear the jets. <laughs> Look snarl at your back when you're stretched on the rack. Hear the jets. Feel the pain in your ship. Feel a strain in your grip. Hear the jets. Feel her rise. Feel her drive. Strain and steel come along on her jets. It's little by little, his songs began to travel along with spaceways ahead of him. Raw spaceman songs. A different kind of song. Strange, sad songs, like the ones you find printed in the centennial editions. Well, there's one called Dark Star Passing and death song of a weed coal, and then finally, the green hills of earth. It grew for 20 years, that song. They say it started way back when Riesling was down in the labor camps in Venus, singing for the indentured men. When Riesler, well, when he hit Venus, he'd always head out to the backwoods to sing for him. First, if someone will kindly pass a bottle. Oh, it ain't much, Riesling. Here, it'll do. Oh. Oh, what is that stuff? Tequila. You can't make them good here on Venus. What do you use? Karak bush. Home, it is. Home, it is different. How'd you come to sign on? When a man comes out the village from the city, he says there's work. You sign the paper and you work. Work? It's work, all right. Ten stinking hours in the jungle of machete. How long you signed for? Well, then I only speak Spanish. I, I, I don't know. The paper says ten years. Ten years? How long you got to go? What's the use? We ain't getting home. You know how many men die out there in the swamp today? Ten men. Ten? What's the use? My mother, she's dead. My father don't care. Girl? Oh, she says she waits. I, I don't know. You... You sing some more, Riesling. We drink and you sing, huh? <laughs> Maybe a new song, son. We ride in the molds of bees. We race 
Shout out tainted breath. She foul our flooded jungles crawling with unclean death. Oh. We've tried each spin in space boat and reckon it's true words. Take us back to the homes of men and the cool dreams of earth. Take us back. What's the matter? Finish the song, Lee I can't. I, I can't yet. It just don't come. I'll finish it uh, when I go home. That's it. When I go home to the hills. Now pass that bottle. A dawn whistle don't blow for four hours. That's where the Green Hills started. And I was there when it was finished. It was 20 years after that. And there wasn't a man flying or on the beach that hadn't heard of Riesling and his songs. He was getting old now for a spaceman. He was a familiar figure through the system. Tall, gaunt, with a dirty bandage tied across his blind eyes. I was a chief jetman then on the old Falcon. We were cradled at Venus, Ellis Isle, scheduled for a direct jump to Great Lakes, Illinois, on Earth. I was checking in down age when Riesling crawled his way up the gangway and came through the lock. Hey, Riesling! Who's that? Mike Hertzman! H Hertzman! What are you doing in this old hog boat? Well, I figured I'd ride it back to Earth. Earth? You're going home, Riesling? I thought you were never going to make that run. What changed your mind? Oh, I've been hankering to set foot in the Ozarks again. Uh, how about those hills? Yeah, I've been singing about them so long now, Hertz, and I, I got to finish the song. I, I got to set foot in the dooryard and hear the wind through that oak tree. <laughs> it's about the last thing I'll be doing. I, I, I got to get home before... Uh, uh, look, Riesling... There's a new company policy in effect now. No more deadhead rides and new code books in force. Oh, that don't bother me none. I, I'm riding it back to Earth. I'm going to finish my song. It, it's got to be there. Now that the skipper's one of them youngsters fresh out of Harriman Institute cadet training, he'll throw the book at you. At me? I've been around space as long as Haley's Common, Bruce's Ridge. <laughs> going back to Earth. Old green hills of Earth. I'm, I'm going home. Was the cure hurts Yes, sir. What are you doing here? Uh, this is a uh, Riesling, Captain. Riesling, huh? I'm uh, dragging it back to Earth, Captain. Not in this ship. Shake a leg and get out of here. Oh, no, Captain. You wouldn't begrudge an old man a trip home. I can't do it. Space precautionary code clause six. Now, come on, clear out. Well, now, look, Skipper. You, you can slide me by onto the distressed spaceman's coals in that code book. Distressed spaceman, my eye. You've been bumming around the system for 30 years. My Skipper, <laughs> you, you're making me do something I've never done to no one before. I'm an old man, an old blind man. I, I want to go home. I never crawled in front of a forest drop in my life, but you got to let me drag home. The law says a man's got a trip coming to him, and you, you can stretch for a poor old blind man. Now, 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 can't you? you? You got to, Skipper. All right, you old space rat, but keep out of the way. I run an efficient ship, and I don't want any trouble. Oh, no, 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 sir. No trouble. I'll just lay down to the power room. I'd kind of like to be near the jets when they blast off. Bird. Sit down, Raisley. Take a load of it. Thanks, Mac. Power room. Fire three. Aye, sir. Now, have you seen these new automatic campers recently? Don't have to do nothing, just sit and watch. Yeah, where's the peeper? Turned off. It's all automatic. Hey, youngsters have it solved. When I was twisting her tail, you had to stay awake. <laughs> hey, you got the old hand damping plates on? All but the links. I unship them. They they cover up the dials. You might need them. Oh, the automatics handle everything. Well, you're finally going home recently, huh? Won't seem the same out past the moon. Yeah, I've been thinking of this a long time, Mac. It's going to be good to get home, reckon. 
The arching sky is calling spacemen back to their dreams. <laughs> You'll burn out clean. Quick, quick. Richling, are you all right? Uh, I reckon. Pretty sharp sunburn. You pick me out of here with tongs and bury me in a lead shield coffin. Uh, radiation's getting bright. I, I can almost see. Bright. Rosy like the sun. Like the sun over the hills down home. We pray for one last land in on the globe that gave us birth. Let us rest our eyes on the fleecy skies. Of the cool green, green hills of Earth. That's the way he died. Riesling, the blind singer of the spaceways. Singing of the home he never reached. The cool green hills of Earth. <laughs> You have just heard X-1, transcribed by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction. Tonight's story, The Green Hills of Earth, written by Robert Heinlein and adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in the cast were Ken Williams as Riesling, Nelson Almstead as Hertzman, Matt Crowley as Hicks, Wendell Holmes as Casey, Bill Griffiths as Rodriguez, Bill Lipton as The Skipper, and William Zuckert as McDougall. Original music for Riesling songs was written and sung by Tom Glazer. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Fred Way and is an NBC Radio Network production. And now, sweet. Strange story of Dr. Grimshaw's sanitarium and of a patient there who suddenly found himself involved in a game of cat and mouse. But the man had actually been reduced to the size of a mouse, while the cat remained full size. What happened then? You'll learn next week. Convicts tell their true stories on The Loser, tonight over most NBC radio stations. Well, there we have it, people. That's it. From 1955, another episode of X-1. Like I said before, Robert A. Heinlein, one of my favorite science fiction writers ever. A lot of people are into Bradbury and Asimov and Vonnegut and all that stuff. For me, it's Heinlein. He was just so different in his writing. Um, he really spoke uh, from like the the voice of man, the voice of humans. Um, it was really, all of his books are just really, really 
different. He created a whole universe of, of books and short stories and novels. Um, and his text speak, he's, he creates all of these, these words and, and, and devices and, and, you know, things in rocket ships that, um, that just don't exist. And because he was a Navy man, uh, in, in real life, Robert Heinlein, his stories always have an air of, uh, of that service man, you know, even his older characters. Most of his, they're, they're, most of his stories have at least one character that is uh, akin to the Navy, uh, usually having to do with rocket ships. Just like Gene Roddenberry fashioned his spacecraft exploration ships, you know, the whole crew was like a Navy crew. They were out on an open sea of stars. And that's some heavy shit right there. I like his nicknames, you know, Jim, what Jimmy Legs or whatever that was. Uh, he always has these great nicknames in his stories. Um, and Ernest Kanoy, one of my favorite NBC staff writers, just does a fantastic job adapting this. Uh, sometimes he'll work with the authors of the stories or george uh lefferts will work with the author uh, of a story to create an adaptation but it seems that that either robert heinlein wasn't going to make enough money working with kenoy to adapt it or he just trusted kenoy enough to say you you deal with it you know i already wrote that story um the all of the words to the music in that episode were written by robert heinlein if you read the story the green hills of earth and you look through it there's a whole page where it's just a song you know and then there there are so many songs that are in the, the book that are not in um today's play so if you get a chance go by your public library and check out Robert Heinlein. If they don't have it there, they can order it. And you can read a book for free from your library. They still have libraries. We have one here in town. Bush is always hanging out there at the library. Uh, across the street with a sign. Or hanging out in the truck. Uh, I'm going to have to stop by there at some point. And say, yo, dude, what's up? Uh, but the library is the place to be. Uh, I don't require the use of the library so much anymore since i learned how to navigate the computer and since i've already got so many books here uh, i love to go by the uh the used bookstores out here and pick up a stack of books and bring them home and add them to my collection there's just good awesome entertainment there you know and a lot of knowledge uh, a whole lot of knowledge to partake from the public library or your local bookstore. Just like most things from the past that wind up in the landfill, books have a lot of use, a lot of time left, unless they're completely destroyed by a landfill or someone's uh, carelessness. Books will last a, a lifetime or two or three or more. Centuries, you know, eons, come on. Let's, uh, you know, let's save this stuff. Let's save it for somebody down the road who's going to appreciate it. I'm glad that all of the stuff that, I, that surrounds me was saved by someone so that I could come along and say, hey, I'll, I'll take that. You know, some of this stuff was was literally pulled out of a, a trash heap. I've got um, boxes and boxes of, of eight-track tapes that were my first eight track tape purchase and they were free some guy on craigslist just had a little ad that popped up and it said free you know uh, a couple of players and, and a couple of boxes of tapes and i knew nothing about tapes at that point i tried to play them i tried to use them they just turned to shit uh, so i had to do the research and learn how to take an eight track tape apart how to rebuild it 
right? So and clean it so that it's like new and put it back together in playable order. Uh, I had to order pads. I had to order splicing tape. I had to order uh, a, a little block to to do all of this on. Uh, and uh, I got to where I would do upwards of 108 tracks in one day. I would rebuild 108 tracks. Um, and I've got like hundreds and hundreds of eight tracks now, most of which uh, are are playable. Uh, my only issue is now I have to learn how to repair my eight track players. Uh, I've got one right here uh, under my under my plant, this silver faced model here. I believe that was a Panasonic. Yeah, that was a Panasonic. Uh, and. Uh, so I just need to get one up. I think this is the last one that I had up and working. That's the one that I used to rebuild tapes uh, because it had a stop on it. You could put stop and it would stop at the end of a track, not the end of the tape, but it would, it, you'd be playing track one, get to the end of the track one, it would stop. So I could line up the tape to see where the foil was and get the foil in the correct spot. Um, so that I could play a tape, test it, listen to it, it would stop. I could pull it out, check it, make sure that it was all still good from after rebuilding it, and then house it that way so that I could literally do an inspection before I were to put it in and play it again later, and then play it on the machine that stops it at the end of the tape, and then house it like that so that the foil is always visible. Uh, they have the foil there so the little magnet can, can or the little thing can read it. Uh, and sense when to change the tracks. Uh, at some point, we'll do a uh, a video on the eight tracks and talk about you know how how they came to be and 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 uh, all the little things that uh, that made them unique, uh, made them desirable and undesirable, uh, which will, of course led to the the cassette tape and then later the CD. So yeah. Uh, that was it. We've done all of our shows for the day. Uh, I've got to make a phone call. So I'm going to let you guys space out on my uh, lava lamp for a few minutes while I go make a phone call. Uh, yeah. Pardon, pardon me. I'm going to make sure my phone is uh, is free of my stereo so that I can make my phone call unhindered by my own voice shouting back at me through the stereo. Uh, and at some point, we heard my phone chime in with a, 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 an alarm and uh, through the stereo, which of course came through on your end. So I apologize for that. Uh, like I said, if you wanna watch any of these episodes of old time radio shows, just go to my playlists. I've got two playlists, one that's X minus one and one that's old time radio shows. OK, and I believe I I believe I uploaded them in, in the correct place. If not, that's where they're going to wind up. They're going to wind up in the old time radio show playlist. And then the X minus ones will wind up in their own playlist because I plan on playing every single one of those. And it may take a couple of years if we're only doing one a one a day i may do okay it's x minus one day you know once a month or something and we're going to play four five six you know play it the whole freaking day or whatever at some point i'm going to go live and do a telethon and give away some stuff because when i get to 100 subscribers i promise that i'm going to give away vintage crap so i'm already looking through my stuff to pick stuff out right so let's see. Uh, we're going to take a look over at this here, and I'm going to go make a phone call. Hey, that's cool stuff right there. Uh, that's 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 cool beans. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave my sound on because I'm afraid that if I turn my sound down or off or mute something, I'm going to lose my sound altogether. So you can take a look at some of those pictures there. And if you can tell me who these people are right now, all of them in that picture, um, 
at least everybody on your your right, every, your the, the shot that you're looking at on your right, right. There you go. All right. So I'll be right back. I'm going to step into the other room. I'm going to make me a phone call and I'll be right back, y'all. Okay. So don't nobody go nowhere. See, you know, I like the way that looks kind of pixelated and old looking. Uh, I don't think I'd like the, the HD cameras. You know, uh, I'm going to have to get one at some point because I'm going to need it to do some really good crystal clear uh, visuals. But I think for the most part, I like this granular, granulated kind of thing. Uh, I like how my things kind of, I think it's jumping because I'm standing here. It's either that or it's the lava lamp. And it doesn't know what to do with those little balls of lava. All right. So, and the the kind of wind or shh that you hear in the background, that's my heater. Because it's a little chilly in here. All right. Of course, my wife thinks I'm a baby. Um. All right. My cameras will be here today. There we go. All right. So I'm going to get into that. All right. I'm going to go make a phone call. I'll be right back, y'all. Don't go. Don't nobody go nowhere.
So nobody watching my uh, my uh, what you call it lava lamp here. I could sit and watch that for a little while. Uh, okay, it looks like my cameras are on the truck on FedEx, and they're headed out here to me. And they should be coming right to me. I shouldn't be able to, uh, I shouldn't have any, uh, any friggin' worry. Of course. You can't really trust anybody, so there you go. Uh, I'm going to leave you watching this <clears throat> lava lamp for another minute here. Hello. Hello. Uh, and then I will be right back. I got to go use the little boy's room. So don't nobody go nowhere, okay? You can probably hear my dog licking her foot. Well, maybe not. She's a licky. You hear that? I don't know if you guys can hear me when they're taking a leak or what, but I'm back, baby. I'm gonna light some incense, man. I like that that whole you know that whole ambiance thing going down. I just dig it. You know. So I'm gonna light me a little bit of Nag Champa. Cause I that's what I dig this to smell, you know. Another thing that'll probably give me cancer. But, you know, you got to enjoy life while you got it. See, something that gave me cancer, right? Most people walking around don't even know they got it. Right? It's just it's festering. It's just festering within. It's just so eating away at our insides. We don't even know it, man. We don't even fucking know. All right, back. Yeah. Yeah, that autofocus thing, man. It just uh it keeps warbling, huh? What am I gonna do about that? 
So if if you're wa- if there's anybody watching that I can't see on my thing here, send me a message. If you send me a message, I'll pick up my guitar and play you a song. How's that? But I got to know there's somebody there. So every once in a while, I'll ask. And if there's somebody there that sends me a message, I will actually pick up my guitar and play. I'll turn off my heater so you can hear it clear. And uh, and I'll play a little song. I will actually sing. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Right? Well, if I'm going to do that, I better, I better do a bong hit so I sound in good form. Oh, wow. I'm, I apologize for you people listening to me in headphones. That was uncalled for. But it was necessary. Whew. A lot of coffee this morning. All I've had to eat is a cereal bar. So at some point, I'm going to get a little bit wobbly in the knees and need to eat something a little more substantial. Uh, I've been going at this since 5 in the a.m., having woken up at 4.20, which is my normal time to wake up. And uh, I'm really enjoying that lava lamp there. I hope that you are. Can you all figure out who the faces are in that photographs, those photographs there? Because there's four photographs, all right? You get, like, bonus points if you can guess who the female is, right? The three down where she's staring at, right, those three, if you can see it clearly enough, That's probably an easy one. Uh, As are probably the other two frames. Uh, If you got any wits about you, you know pretty much three of those frames, right? Uh, That lady there, she's, she's a rough one to figure out. So you get, uh, you get bonus points if you figure that out. Right. Even if this is later on after the fact, if you're watching this in a playlist at some point down the road and you actually I get a message that says, hey, I know what those people are. All four frames. Then I will send you the booby prize. All right. I ain't going to send you a booby, but I will send you uh, something and you'll go, oh, my gosh, dude, that's awesome. Right. But we'll have to have some back and forth first so that I can find out what to send you. Because I don't want to just send you random crap. You know, I could do that. I got a lot of random crap. Do you guys want random crap? Let me know. Send me a message now and I'll send somebody random crap. I I would expect that you would want something more akin to your taste and your character, nature and all that there. So just let me know. Let me know. I think we're going to use this shot a lot. It's it's kind of it's alive. It's 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 a live shot. Uh, you can just see you can just make out my graphics bong there on the side. That's fantastic, which really makes this uh, you know a throwback picture. And then we've got my uh, my walkie-talkie there that you can barely see in the shadow. I might add some more light to this so that it's a little bit uh, a little bit more better. Let's try that. Let's try a little bit of light. Hey, check that out. Now we got some stuff going on. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with gas. All right. You see the little medallions hanging next to the 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 flag tapestry, right? There's two little faces in those little glass bubbles. Those are my wife's parents. On the top is is her mother, Guadalupe. And, uh, oh my gosh, look at that. Sorry, I lost my, uh, I lost myself in the, uh, in the lava lamp. And And the incense burning there. I forgot what I was talking about. All right, so check out my walkie-talkie there, right? 
Isn't that cool? That is a realistic walkie-talkie from Radio Shack. I have the box for that, and I have three other ones. One just like it, and then a pair of other uh, walkie-talkies that actually work. They actually work. I just have to put bag trees in them. And since my wife was so sweet enough to buy me this uh, this uh, recharger and a big box of uh, AA batteries and some AAA batteries. So now all these things that I have powered with batteries, like my audio mixer, hello, um, I, I don't have to throw away batteries anymore. I'm so... So pleased about that. I mean, man, it drove me nuts for the longest time that I kept having to throw batteries away. In fact, I, I don't throw them away. If I can help it, I'll save them because they're not really dead and I can use them in other stuff, right? Uh, remotes and whatnot. And then they'll last for a long time. I use them on a mouse. So I, I try not to use the rechargeable batteries in everything because i've got these extra batteries i'm not going to use these these rechargeable batteries in a tv remote i'll use some of the half drained batteries and get the most out of those and then i'll put them in the the dead battery receptacle you know so what do you think people who are these peeps let me point it down just a little bit there we go that's the ticket look at that so this is pretty much how i exist from day to day um well, you can see my little Sony Walkman and my little Sony Watchman. Actually, it's a realistic Watchman, a uh, little portable TV. Uh, let me stand it up so you can see the screen. That'd look cool. All right, I'm going in, people. Don't get, don't get frightened. I'm going on screen. There we go. So now you can see my little Watchman, too. It's a little TV screen. That's how we used to watch uh, TV on the go um, back in the 80s and 90s before there were smartphones, before there was portable, I mean, handheld everything. That was it. They had a watch one that was pretty cool. But this is the one that you could just uh, strap on. I had one just like this uh, in the 90s, and I used it in my car, in my Saturn. And I had it Velcroed up on the dash. So when I was in traffic in L.A. going to Disneyland or Hollywood, I could just flip on this little thing and listen to the whatever was going on, whatever station I could pick up. Hopefully it was Channel 5. And then I could, you know, listen to some Magnum P.I. or, you know, uh, Little House in the Prairie or whatever the hell was going on. Otherwise, the radio would be off, the TV would be on, or I'd listen to... Uh, old radio shows you know i love to listen to old radio shows to this day driving down the road uh in fact driving around here locally i still drive around with the radio off i don't know uh, you know i've got boxes and boxes of tapes uh, i have access to you know the the depths of music that is now unimaginable because of all of these streaming things right and i just choose to to not listen to anything, mainly because I've got shit going on in my own head and I don't want to throw myself off. You know, I'm either I'm either working on some kind of edit in my head or I'm working on some kind of lyric in my head or I'm trying to figure out how to to work out this show, you know, and go from one camera to four cameras to, to do a live thing, to do a live thing from somewhere else. You know, it, it just everything just keeps escalating and escalating escalating you know my show today sound failure you know that was a bummer you know it doesn't give me hope for uh for doing this whole thing here 
you know, on a remote location. Uh, if I can have a new computer and a new mixer and and not be able to work my sound with it. Ooh, that looks cool. Uh, and then the only sound I can use is analog sound from the 80s, right? Then they're, they're you know, th is that where the issue is? Does it just become so unrecognizable by YouTube and their algorithms that they just, it just stops working, you know? So uh, my thing is to keep sound pumping through it at all times so that it doesn't think that I'm, I'm dead and then go dead, right? And then every once in a while, I got to run and run into the other room or pick up my phone and check to see if, if I'm actually live and if I'm actually being heard. You know, so and I don't really get a monitor here. I get a little sound bar that kind of has some dots and they kind of bounce. And then it goes to nothing. And then I start talking again and it bounces back up. Uh, I can see my video. I can see the video that's going out live. What I can't do is see and hear all of this together live on another thing unless I pick up my phone or go into the other room and pop on YouTube, which is exactly what I do. And that works just fine. Uh, hey, honey, am I am I live? Just a second. Yeah, you're fine. Thank you, dear. Uh, so that happens quite frequently, you know. And that just to me that just makes for great live, real programming. I mean, you know, I I keep telling people that I talk to, I've got the realest reality show out there. Anything could happen. I mean, quite literally, my house could fall from its its perches here, this this mobile home. Anything could happen. My dog could throw up in my lap. Somebody could knock at the door. There could a fight could break out outside. I mean, it's it's been known to happen, all of these things. So yeah. And I had so much fun cleaning my van yesterday. I got it all tidied up and everything. I've got to take my daughter to school at uh, at 1130, 11, 1130 something. Uh, so I get to drive my van. It's not running all that great. Uh, and I'm going to have to get gas at some point. I should have got it yesterday thinking, you know, that I've got to take my daughter to all the way to the campus. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to, throw some bedding into the uh, van and take it with me. And rather than drive back and forth twice, I'm just going to stay there and wait for her. Sit in the back with my phone and some Netflix, you know, and, and sip on a little water and take a nap. And I can get a good hour long nap. That'll really, really, uh, revive me better than you know going into bed and crawling into bed for three hours uh, that'll just wipe me out and then i'll be groggy the rest of the night so like i said before if somebody chimes in and says that they are watching i'll pick up my guitar and play a song how's that but i gotta i gotta know somebody cares enough to to say that they're there and then i get to see who you are <laughs> or send me a happy face or something all right can anybody describe that sound he's got water in his muffler what's up i gotta warm up my coffee i cannot abide my cold coffee So, of course, you know, my, my daughter is on just like, you know, the bizarre college kid schedule, always, you know, 
either asleep during the day or awake at night. She just always on a different, completely different schedule than me and mom, right? So she's always busy. She'll come out and say, okay, like I'm awake, I need food, you know, or I gotta, I gotta do homework, I need food. I'm right in the middle of something, feed me, you know? And because she's in college and, you know, we don't want her to really have to worry about crap. We, we spoil her, you know, and she knows it. And she appreciates it, which is why we do. Um, but yeah, um, my wife is is on a completely different schedule than I am. I'm on a different schedule than both of them. So at dinner time, which usually is about the same schedule, we'll all be like five, six o'clock, sometimes seven o'clock. We'll be like, hey, who thought about dinner? You know, what are we going to eat? What's up? And uh, and quite often we'll be clueless unless we've planned it out days ahead of time, which I like to do. If I go to the store, I like to think about at least three meals, something to to help create three meals from stuff we have at home, if if not an entire meal. Right. So. Uh, and it just it just makes it easier rather than having to go to the store every day, every day, every day, which sometimes you know, like I went to the Walmart three times the other day mainly it was for tech stuff but i did have to get groceries too you know uh but yeah we're all on different life schedules our clocks are all set differently you know i got a split shift sleeping you know so that's kind of weird so when it came to dinner last night it's like six o'clock and i go on and my wife's like just chilling out on, on our bed watching TV and I'm I'm in here doing computer shit. So all of a sudden I'm just struck with hunger, you know, ready to keel over. Uh and I'm like, so honey, any thoughts on dinner? She's like, Nope. Natalie, any thoughts on dinner? No, I don't feel too good. So I don't really know. And I'm like, oh gosh, I hate these these days. Cause we don't know what the hell we're gonna do. And I was like, all right, well look, here's some macaroni and cheese. Uh, let's go down to DG and get some uh, some fish sticks, right? Let's do that. And uh, no deal. They didn't have shit. It's hard to keep that store down there, Dollar General stocked, um, because it's so, not just because it's so new that people like to go there, but because it's centrally located here in Joshua Tree. And locals go there as much as they hate it coming here they love going there uh, and then it's a tourist stop too so they never have a lot of the important stuff milk bread eggs juice butter i mean all of the and then all of the frozen foods that are staples for a lot of people that are always missing so we went down to get some some breaded fish fillets they didn't have crap and that was the main thing that we went for so we said you know let's just go to stater brothers it's it's eight minutes up the road. It's a little bit more of a drive. Yeah, we're not we're not dressed or ready to go shopping, but you know that don't stop anybody else. So plug it. And on the way, we decided to get some of their deli fried chicken, right? Their hot food. It wasn't all that great last night because we got it so late. Um, it had been there a while, and I think they overcooked a little bit of it. So that was kind of a bummer. Um, but we did pick up some some things for tonight and tomorrow night uh and lunch stuff so that helps uh and i'm probably going to make myself something to eat after the show here uh from what we got last night and i won't tell you if you guess i'll play a song <laughs> mm -hmm. i think i'm going to do a lot of my shows like this do an audio an audio deal here with me just aiming it at one of the cool spots in my house because i try to for me it's visuals right kid video here right it, for me it's 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 visual uh, that's one of my senses that i love to abuse uh sound audio video visuals you know 
that's real important to me. So every place in this room here is really like that word I love to use curated because, you know, I, I, I dress every little spot in my room to highlight and to show off, you know, not just my past, but things from my past people, you know, maybe not even people that I've met. Although, uh, if you've guessed who the, the people are behind me here in one of those photographs, you know, uh, you see the astronauts down there. Okay. Uh, that's the Apollo 11 crew, the crew that landed on the moon. Okay. Interesting little story about the Apollo 11 crew is that during 1975, I believe, while my father was still working at the Pasadena City College radio station, KPCC, in Pasadena, he was doing a, uh, they did a lot of public announcements, right? Um, what do they call this? PBP? Yeah. It was a, just a public, public announcements, and they did a lot of those, where they would just announce stuff that's, that's going on in, in the world, in the community, you know, how to find resources and that kind of stuff, because it was a public radio type thing. Uh, so they were doing a promo for the soon to be opening, uh, children's science center there in Pasadena in the air or one, or one of the surrounding areas there. And my father was tasked with going and talking with the person in charge of kind of. Um, the PR and making all of this kind of happen and, and all making all the connections and getting all these things done. And that guy just happened to be Buzz Aldrin, the astronaut of the Apollo 11 crew, right? And at the time, I'm about seven years old, right? Uh, and I'm just a little toe-headed, long hair kid with with matted tangled hair and a grubby little face and dirty clothes right and i actually got to go and meet buzz aldrin and shake his hand and i remember this as a little kid this is one of my my actual memories in my head was meeting this this really really nice smiley i mean really super smiley if you've ever seen him talk uh, and seen photographs of him. He's got this really great Steven Spielberg smile. Look at look at Buzz Aldrin smile, jovial, and then look at at Steven Spielberg smile, jovial, and he, they have the same they have the same attributes, right? So I got to meet this guy, and he was the sweetest guy in the world. He was just a just a charmer, just a great guy, and he did this public um, public announcement thing uh and my father you know did the thing asking him questions and and talking to him and i actually got a photograph uh with buzz aldrin um that photograph exists somewhere my brother swears that someone has it somewhere i would love to see it uh so if anybody out there from my family or friends knows of this photograph of me and Buzz Aldrin from Pasadena in about 1975. Please let me know. Please show it to me. Aunt, uncle, you know, cousin, something. Uh, my father's wife, you know, somebody. If somebody's got something somewhere, please let me know. Uh, that'd be great. But that was one of those, you know, stories uh, from my past. That just happens to tie in with the, uh, with the uh, Apollo 11 photograph there. If you want to talk some more uh, about this photograph, well, I've already discussed the Grateful Dead. Of course, I've seen the Grateful Dead a well, half dozen times uh, and been to a half dozen venues with with uh, some friends. Uh, and so that was neat. Uh, Groucho Marx, uh, my father was a huge fan 
of Groucho Marx and Groucho Marx uh, work, not just his early work with the Marx Brothers and on radio and you you bet your life on the radio and you bet your life on TV, uh, which, of course, if you're watching the other the other day on my show, I asked if anybody knew who George Fenneman was and George Fenneman was the announcer for the TV version of You Bet Your Life. He was also home savings and loan commercial guy, uh, big shield home savings and loan uh, commercial back in the 70s. So there's a little info for you to partake there. Um, so um, that pretty much wraps up. Every, I'm not going to give away who the female is in the frame there. All right. Um, somebody's going to have to to chime in and let me know who that is. Right. And all you got to do is put this up on a TV. Take your phone. If you can't figure it out in your own head, take your phone and use that image to find out who she is. All right. So uh, or screen capture this and then zoom in and search for that face because you can find it you'll figure it out uh black widow <clears throat> it was she was really important uh in her day i'll say that especially for women so yeah um we've got above the uh above the lava lamp there and to the left of the lava lamp uh, are two uh, little paintings uh, of Native American. Uh, I believe those are a Sioux tribe uh, and they're just doing everyday stuff. Uh, I think the top one is a, is a woman in a, with, with, a, with a child, a grandmother and a child. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the little village scene with the, with the uh, the teepee and uh, the horses and uh, braves, as it were. Uh, and then my cool little Converse shoe. It's not a baby shoe. It's one of those little uh, keychain shoes that my daughter bought uh, at some point. And you see the little cactus? The little cactus, that's the fighting cacti from my daughter's college copper mountain college yay that is a mccoy ceramic happy face mug uh i i don't want to tell my sad mccoy happy face story again i'll do it when i have slides and i can i can go further into it and i'll put together a slideshow about my mccoy uh happy face cups Ooh, makes me want to cry uh, so the Planet of the Apes there, that's a little card that I got when I bought my Planet of the Apes shirt. And, uh, of course, that movie came out in 1968, the year I was born. Um, and one of my favorite movies, for for some odd reason, it just, it's always been, uh, way before I knew it was a 1968 movie, it was one of my favorite movies. It happens with a lot of the stuff in my life. It'll become my favorite, and then it'll be like, oh my God, it's 1968. It's that all over again. Even some of the people on uh on facebook or in music um uh, music especially i'll be like wow i really really dig that artist and then it's like oh my gosh you know they were born in 68 you know or like robert plant uh, he was born on my birth birthday uh, august 20th you know so that's that's pretty cool uh yeah, and there are some, you know, great artists out there who are my age that, uh, yeah, man, it just really, it really turned me on creatively, you know? It's just some real righteous, real righteous, cool stuff. So I'm hoping at some point I get some some female viewers to come on and give me their opinions about what's about what's been going on in my show. I'd like to get some some female viewers uh to come on and converse with me and get their opinions um i i keep sharing this on facebook so that hopefully somebody out there has got the bug and wants to follow me and and watch some of this stuff when it pops up and i'm hoping i get somebody out there who wants to say what's up dude 
uh, Luna from uh, from Elsinore. Uh, she was a younger girl from back in the day, and she was just a friend of a friend of a friend, you know. And and the age goes down as she becomes the friend of a friend of a friend. All of a sudden, she's way younger than us. You know, but she was way righteous, cool. You know, she was way cool peeps and had a cool mom. Um, and uh, she was just really neat to hang out with, you know. And I never had any designs on uh, hooking up with her. Uh, I just loved hanging out with her, you know. I'm sure at some point I had a little bit of a crush on her. Uh, like I did with most of the girls that I knew, uh, whether they knew it or not. You know, but she was so, so cool. We went, uh, I took her to her first concert to go see Guns N' Roses. Uh, they opened up for the Rolling Stones. So uh, I took my best friend and my father too. And that was neat in 1989, the Steel Wheels tour. Uh, that was, that was pretty cool. I taught her how to drive a stick in my MGB. Um, that was neat. Uh, yeah, it was fun. I, I, I would love if she would stop by at some point and say hi. Or Heather, a girl that I met up in Mammoth in the uh, in the 90s. Uh, she was really, really fun to hang out with and just sit and rap with. Uh, we got to go to, like, we got to take her to the Renaissance Fair. She wasn't into it, but she agreed to go one weekend and hung out. We put her in a costume and, you know, paraded her around. Hey, check her out. This is our new friend. Um we finally talked her into coming, you know, and they would do that with people. They did that with me when when they finally got me back there, you know. Hey, this is so and so, you know. Let's give them the, let's give them the, the run them through the ringer, you know, <laughs> run them through the gamut of bullshit, <laughs> haze him. Uh, um, so you know, everybody had to go through the same, the same crap. And I hope that dog doesn't get loose out there and run amok. Ever since she switched owners, she's just been a little bit, eh? you know, and I hate to say it, but that's what happens with dogs. You know, they get to a second or third home and they're just they're just like, what the fuck's going to happen now? Who's that? What's going on? Are they coming to get me? Or, you know, is that the guy that used to have me? Oh, it makes me crazy to see dogs that have to go through that. That's why I know that any dog I ever, ever have is not going to be rehomed. You know, the dogs that came from my father. At some point, it was talked about rehoming them. And I was like, eh, I knew it wasn't going to happen. You know, emotionally, I couldn't deal with that story hanging around in my head. Where are these dogs? Who are they with? What's going on? Are they okay? I got to know it personally. So, so we, now we got four dogs, you know, and that's fine. You know, most of them are tiny. So, so there you go. Uh, I love it. 19. My brother used to use graphics, so that's when we first started buying graphics. Uh, and that one is used. It's new, but it's used. I bought one for my brother and mailed it to him, and bought one for another friend and mailed it to him uh, because I wanted to share in the nostalgia, just like I sent him each zigzag shirts and KME t shirts, right? And if anybody, uh, wants to to tune into the 100 subscriber episode coming up probably soon i'm averaging uh, a, a new viewer every two days a new subscriber so it, it's quite possible that within a few weeks we could be doing a a long telethon show which means that you'll probably see a long a lot of static shots like this uh, especially when i'm sleeping uh, I'll probably put a bed in here and just sleep in here. I'll take my meals here. The only thing you won't see me do is sleep and eat or sleep and poop. Uh, you may not even see me eat uh, with this face. Uh, that may not be uh, appealing for all audiences, right? Uh, but I'm going to do a telethon. I'm going to do a live 100 subscriber telethon drawing. So the drawing will take place after I have X amount of viewers watching, which means it's going to be up to the viewers to get the share. Then I will sit and talk with the, the drawing winner and curate. I love that word. A little curate, a little package, a little gift pack for them. 
uh, attuned to their likes uh, and their tastes for the 1970s and 80s, whether they were there or not. Let's talk about their favorite movie, their favorite TV show, uh, their favorite music, whatever. You know, I can find something around here that they're going to really dig and that's going to get their juices flowing as far as collecting 1970s and 80s memorabilia and stuff, stuff that you can use. Right. Like that well, walkie talkie up there. I can use that walkie talkie with its with its sister walkie talkie with the other two walkie talkies. Right. Uh, I can use that bomb. My lava lamp. That lava lamp is new, but uh, it is of the past. That little that little TV, I love that little TV. I can't wait to just plug that into my VCR and have a little picture coming on it. And I'll put a camera. In fact, that's one of the things that I should do is I should have I should have the reflection off of that little TV there. And I should have a picture going through there from my VCR. All right. So there you go. That's that's going to happen. Right. Uh, in fact, I got I got to make a note of that. I got to make a note of that now so that I do not forget that uh, TV, the mini TV uh, from VCR. And that's so easy to do. That's just a couple of little cables and adapters. Uh, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll put on like the incredible shrinking man on that little tiny TV. Uh, in fact, I used to have a little, a little like eight, seven or eight inch, uh, color television black i think it was a black and white or color tv right i've still got it but it i think it burned out so i'm gonna have to pull it apart and find the tube that needs replacing and then find that tube right hopefully it's not the actual picture tube even though it's the screen that went dark um regardless that's one of those things that i could literally have sitting right there between the lava lamp and that candle right that yellow candle it would literally fit right in there between the lava lamp and the end of the screen there on the by the candle that would be neat i'm gonna have to do that and then just have some little picture movie thing going there i mean it's not really recognizable to algorithms and stuff especially if there's no sound and it's uh kind of glitchy and fady like it is uh it's going to be hard for for something to grab onto it so i'm going to run and then i can always just pipe in student movies school films and stuff that are easy to get off the internet archive and that are totally free to free domain public use stuff so that's pretty damn cool um, um people comment on my links but they're not coming here to comment on the show so uh loud and clear okay well if i'm coming through loud and clear then why don't you comment here on the show? Oh, because I asked on the post. That's why I said that. All right. So uh, if there's anyone there at any point, say, show me a message while I'm alive. And I'll play you a song. Yeah. Of course, my voice sounds horrible because I do this for anywhere from two to five or six hours a day now. Um, four days a week so my voice can get a little hoarse after a while uh, i've been on for over four hours now uh, i haven't had to talk all of that time because we've been listening to radio shows we listen to four shows today and uh, and you can enjoy those shows in the playlists just pop through my channel go to the playlists and see what's there uh you can also people don't know that you they, there's a a, a a YouTube community, right? And so you can go to, you know, where it says videos and shorts and playlists and stuff. You scroll further down and it says community and you can go there and see behind the scenes stuff, photographs. Uh, you can take a quiz. If somebody takes a quiz, I'll add some more quizzes. Um, there's a there's a couple, you know, questionnaires and stuff polls so there's all kinds of stuff we can do as a community and get involved together um, sharing the experiences of the past uh, i'd love at some point uh, in this next season what i'm going to be doing is wiring my telephone into this uh, not my smartphone but my wired 
telephone. It's got cords on it, those little curly cords. It's got a re handheld receiver. It's got a, a push button dial thing, right? It's an actual telephone. You tell your kids about them. You see them on TV and movies all the time. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to be using. And what I'll do is I will send out a personal message to somebody and give them my phone number. And then they will call that landline and we will communicate on the show. And then I can get somebody to tell me their story, right? And as long as everybody follows the rules, you know, and is cool, then we can do something like that. And won't that be neat to be able to take a live caller, right? Uh, I'm probably going to start with some friends because it'll be real easy to work it out with them, right? Um, I won't be afraid of giving them my my home landline phone number. I'll know that they won't be able to uh, screw me over by talking about stuff that uh, that are taboo on YouTube here. Uh, and I don't mind I don't mind having boundaries and rules and regulations and stuff here on on YouTube. Uh, I think they're important uh, to to make it a safe environment, a safe place for people to hang out and do exactly what I'm doing. I mean, I want everyone watching or listening to feel comfortable with what's going on. And I don't want to intentionally offend anyone. So I don't try. I won't apologize if somebody gets offended. That's on you, man. That's your own mental and emotional hang up. If you get offended by something I say, you know, it's a bummer, right? But I'm not, I won't apologize because I'm not doing it intentionally, right? If I say something and I know I shouldn't have said that, then I'll say, hey, you know, I that was stupid. I should have I should retract that. Let me rephrase that. Right. But I'm not going to apologize because someone, you know, gets all twisted up in their undies because I said something about something or somebody that, you know, that they feel really, really strong about. You know, everybody's entitled their opinions. Uh, I should not be crucified for mine. They're just opinions. They're just my thoughts. You know, they're no reflection on you or anyone else. Uh, I try not to be demeaning or degrading to anyone. You know, I'm just hanging out. I'm just hanging out. Uh, this show is in two parts. So if you're watching this uh, and you don't know that, go check out part one, because that's where some of the shows are. And we talked about some other stuff there. Uh, so there, I'm going to go warm up my coffee again. Yes, I'm still drinking the same second half of cup that I've gotten. So there you go. You can probably still hear me anyway. That microphone's pretty good. And my microwave's loud. So I'm going to do that. Wow. So yeah, the wife's gone. Uh, oh. Daughter's still asleep. She's going to be asleep for about another, oh wow, another 10 minutes. I can't believe she's going to be getting up here soon. Um, and then we're going to take off just a few minutes early today, like maybe 10 minutes early. So we can go by the uh, the school bookstore. Uh, I have yet to get my swag, my school swag, because uh, we didn't want to use up any of her uh, scholarship stuff. She gets gifted money up the wazoo uh, in gift cards and gas cards and food cards and stuff because of the programs that she's involved with they're constantly throwing stuff at her to help her uh her academic success right and that's really cool because she deserves that she earned all of the the uh the accolades that she gets from from school and from the organizations <clears throat> pardon me that she's involved with <clears throat> well so um it's 
it's nearing the end of her college experience here. She's going to graduate with an AA in psychology. And then it's off to get her uh, bachelor's degree in psychology at university, right? So she's what she's she's ending up with these gift cards for the school bookstore, right? Where she goes to get her supplies and her books and things. And she's got all this extra gift card money. So it's like, okay, let's get as many supplies as you think you can use for the fall. And at the same time, I can finally get some shirts and hats and stuff, right? Uh, Cause I'm, I'm that kind of guy, you know, those are the kind of cool things I want. And then of course, any gadgets we can get to help the show out and anything we can get to help, help out at home uh, personally. Um, but mom has a really nice uh, Copper Mountain College shirt. Uh, that's really cool. It's, it's a beige tan with brown and it's really neat natural colors desert colors so i, I hopefully they'll have something like that and i can get one of those uh i'm a really i'm a t-shirt guy i've already got a couple of college t-shirts from her uh, university t-shirts actually so i'm really excited to get a college t-shirt from copper mount college maybe one of those fighting cacti their mascot fighting cacti shirt would be cool um st colorful stuff I want colorful stuff. If I can get another hat, that'd be great. I've only got one Copper Mountain College hat. Uh, patches, buttons, anything with logos on it, pins. Uh, that's that's really cool. I mean, let's just go, let's go swag crazy, you know, because you can't really use it uh, later unless we go back over to the college. Um, but she's going to have moved on by then, uh, more than likely. So, yeah, uh, I'm really happy and excited about going to the campus today and spending, you know, uh, going on a shopping spree. You know, all right, we got 10 minutes. Let's go and just run through the place. Right. That's going to be great. Ah, whittling down the last of my coffee here. Uh, and we are in the fifth hour. We are right in the middle of the fifth hour of mornings with crazy old weird bearded guy and this is the wednesday edition so we did old time radio wednesday and i'm really really happy with the uh, graphics that's why in the comments it says damn that looks so cool i'm talking about the graphics man not this lava lamp behind me i'm talking about the graphics from x minus one where i've got this moving star field uh, and my graphics kind of floating in space, doing warp drive. It's fucking awesome. I love it. So as I get better at using all of these utilities for editing and creating, uh, I'm going to be building and creating more and more graphics and more elements and more parts to this show. So uh, my plan for Mondays at some point during upcoming season three, which begins Monday, we're going to start introducing uh, Movie Mondays, Movie Monday Memories, uh, some kind of crap like that. And I'll build some graphics for it. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a movie up on the screen that we watched or we might have watched when we were kids in uh, middle school or junior high or high school or something. You know, your body and you, uh, you know. Um, or, you know, something. I, I'm not going to play any of those cool Disney math science deals that were just a ball to watch uh, with Professor Duck. But uh, I will be playing some weird off-the-wall, oddball things. And uh, I might even at some point be screening some of those things here. And you'll be watching a camera looking at a projector screen and we'll do a 16 millimeter projection of a school film something we would have seen uh back in the day uh, i've got a few things picked out already and i don't want to give away any surprises but there is some great animated stuff from uh the 1970s that we definitely saw in grade school 
uh and it's just it's just it's awesome that I'm going to be able to present this to you. I've just got to work out a few bugs with the technological crap, but I think we're going to get there and we're going to get there real soon. Playing my graphics this morning was a step in that direction. Tomorrow, I'm going to experiment a little bit more with graphics and sound and see if we can't get there all the way. All the way, baby. Uh, I want to take it to the to the next level and kick it up a few notches. Uh, I'd like to do uh, television Tuesdays and watch some old weird shit that we've seen on TV in the 70s and 80s and 60s and 50s and 40s, as far back as TV goes. Some of the early television broadcasts, right? And I think the earliest television broadcast that I know of was the 1930 Olympics or 1929, 20, it was the, the early Olympics that were live from Berlin, Germany, right? Just about the time they were starting to take on the whole world, right? The, the Nazis were, not Germany, the Nazis. Uh, I, I, we, we should not hold anything against the German people for something that a bunch of fucking nut jobs did, right? Uh, we got a bunch of nut jobs in this country running the show, and you really can't hold the average citizen accountable for uh, what a bunch of fucking bastards are doing uh, with all that power, right? I mean, what are we going to do, right? What are we going to do? Short of holding some, you know, kind of bizarre, you know, I mean, look what happened in the Capitol building, you know, all because of exactly that people went way to the the far extreme right and and that what's this that just shouldn't uh you know hey i got a hand there hey peace um that that, that kind of shit just you know insurrection civil war that's no way to deal with shit you know <clears throat> our voices are so strong now because we can unite them right everybody can not only be heard individually but we can be heard as these huge groups of people who are saying who are saying oh, we're sick of this shit change and fucking change now and uh that body of change is is growing it's it's getting larger i just heard my daughter's alarm uh so at some point you might hear her uh skulking about waking up getting ready to do her thing and then uh I'd like to stay on as long as I can today because uh, I enjoy this. Uh, this is where I get to speak my mind about things, tell my stories. Uh, but mainly it helps with my depression. It keeps me from going to dark places. So I really dig this. I, I, I love it when there's there's some one on one, some communication with the with the a group of individuals out there um, but if it's just me rambling uh, i'm going to do that because i can i can sit here and not have the camera on me now and talk to you uh, i can throw up uh, graphics from my other computer if i want to so many things are going on i think thursdays are going to be throwback thursdays and i'm going to do slideshows and videos from my past we're going to start with slides photographs that kind of stuff and then what I'll do is I may even air some sneak previews of stuff for my Sunday morning show, right? Uh, and I'm I'm still hoping to get some sound on this so I can cap it off and broadcast it. Uh, and then not just broadcast it live, but uh, preview it uh, on Sunday morning live at 5. And once again, I'm real excited about the whole idea of doing a Monday night live from um, the Giant Rock meeting room. I don't want to jinx it, but I, I really think it has potential. And I really think technologically I can pull it off now. Um, I've got a couple of cameras coming today, uh, and they should be here any time from FedEx. Uh, I'm real North Palm Springs, which means uh, 
a couple of hours ago they were headed out here uh so in fact let me go uh since this is live i can and you're not watching me i can get up and go check the door and i don't see anything out there um now the instructions for fedex or any of the delivery people uh when it comes to my house is just to put it on my porch right and usually if they put it on my porch they'll give the door a tap uh or if they put it on my porch i can you know at, at least they're close enough that i can hear their vehicle uh, and you know i live in a mobile home so the walls are paper thin anyway so you know uh i, I can't wait for these these two guys to get here today um at some point I, i've got another good tripod but at some point i'm gonna have to get another tripod i'll probably check the thrift shop usually when you go by the thrift shop to get a used tripod i don't have it with me but the little piece that inserts that you hook your camera to uh and then you can remove the camera easily from the tripod by flipping a lever uh, usually that piece is missing uh, which makes the tripod essentially useless, right? I have one of those pieces. So I'm going to stick that piece in my pocket so that I can size it up when I get there. And then if I find a tripod that fits, I'll buy it. Or if I find a tripod that has one of those. Now, I I prefer Velma tripods because they are um, they're adjustable. They have levels on them they're they're user friendly they're smart um and they're lightweight but they're really sturdy aluminum um okay i was just checking outside to see who's out there neighbor taking off of somebody no big deal uh you don't need to know everything stop asking sheesh stop being so nosy people it's my business so yeah i'm 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 real real jazzed today uh at some point i'm just gonna have to go out and drive over um to bush's corner and see if he's there and hang out with him and tell him and get his fucking phone number right because i'm sick of this shit. i need you know i need i need some back and forth um and i'd love to bring bush to you live on uh a friday night and then maybe do like a mini documentary or even do a segment you know the world ac according to bush right i mean that right i gotta write that down a, a world the world according to bush that's that right there is a keeper uh world bush that's that right there is gonna have to be something because he would nail he would knock that out of the park right uh he's just you know, if if I put together, just sit down and talk with him for an hour, uh, I can get a nice fifteen or twenty minute segment of you know, or even even just a couple of minutes, five minutes, you know, and just splice a bunch of video together of him explaining something. This is his explanation of this condensed down to you know a short a manageable bite size you know video sound bite you know that that would be really really cool you know uh and and i would love to show him in in the light uh you know that would garner him the respect that he deserves because uh he's not just some kook that stands out on the corner screeching trying to pass out some kind of xeroxed pamphlet you know, I mean, he's he's got something to say. He's, you know, and I'd love to be able to bring that message to you and talk to you all more with him here. Uh, I doubt I'm going to get him over here in the morning, even though I think that he'd probably kill it here in the morning. Uh, I really do. I think that Bush would uh, would be a great addition to this whole venue, uh, just getting on and rapping. Uh, I think also David uh david wesley would also be a, a great addition to come on in the mornings on occasion as a guest um and just sit here and drink coffee and bullshit about stuff you know here's a topic let's watch some video or some photographs and discuss kind of like a, a joe rogan 
thing, right? But only this would be uh, even more real, right? Joe Rogan's show is pretty close to reality, but he's he's pretty out there, right? Uh, and then, of course, this stuff is way overproduced and sponsored. So then there's that whole aspect that he's he's beholden to his sponsors and stuff. At some point, everyone is right, which is why I don't ever want to do that. I don't want to have sponsors and people that that I have to answer to. I answer to YouTube, you know, and uh, and I'm grateful to have the opportunity to be here. Uh, so thank you, YouTube. Uh, I can't wait to at some point get my little 10,000 views thing uh, because I'm going to get there. I'm gonna, I'm almost at 5,000 views with my videos. I've got uh, over 140 videos now, right? Uh, and it's not about, for me, it's not about subscribers. Having a connection with my subscribers uh, is more important than having a, a quantity of su 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 subscribers. I want a quality of time with people. You know, I would rather have a, a lower number of subscribers and have a connection with them and have this grow slow enough so that I can get to know each of my new subscribers individually and forge a relationship with them. I, I would love for this to be like a community type setting where we all have connections, nicknames, running gags, jokes, things that we're all, that only us are in on, right? Uh, 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 a trading of of inform information and ideas, you know, something like that, like that. There, um, like I said, I'm going to probably do more morning stuff using uh, a static shot um this being my favorite static shot because it's so alive with that lava lamp right so we'll probably use this one a lot i dare say that this this whole tech end of this is is moving on up it's moving on the f up and I'm real, real excited about it. I just cannot help myself. I cannot and I will not in any circumstances help myself come down over the excitement. Right there. Right there. What we have here is the failure to regurgitate. Right? There you go. Oh, Groucho. I've got some other great pictures like this, this shot that you're looking at, that view. I've got some other great views of this room that I want to share. But I think today this this is going to be the view for, for today and maybe the view to wrap up this week. Uh, and then I think, uh, therefore, I am. Uh, I think at some point we'll do like one cool static shot in my room a week uh, or I'll put I'll put the camera on uh, one of my cool vintage artifacts and we can discuss it and look at it thumb through an encyclopedia or a magazine or a book or look at some look at a box of eight tracks and go through them uh, while we're listening to some uh, some music. You know, like look at some Grateful Dead eight tracks and listen to a listen to a bootleg tape, right? Of of the Grateful Dead. That that'd be a cool, you know, a cool show. That'd actually be one of the uh, throwback Thursday shows, one of the vintage days, right? Uh, and I'll probably get to do a lot of that looking around the room checking stuff out let's point the camera here and you guys can look through this with me right and we'll probably do a lot of that not just through this upcoming season starting monday season three uh but we'll do uh we'll do a lot of it uh otherwise you know and and we're going to be doing it on the the live telethon broadcast that's going to go on and on and on 
until we get to the right viewer count live so I can hold a drawing. And I'll probably just pick like a random number, like 10 or something. As soon as we've got 10 people on watching at the same time, I'm going to draw names out of a hat, right? Or my popcorn bucket. I keep saying hat because it's most common to do it out of a hat. So I'll pull names out of a popcorn bucket from my subscriber list, my my viewer list, my Facebook friends list, and I'll go through that and we'll pick somebody and I'll get with that person and we'll get some stuff and get some stuff mailed out to you. It's only going to cost me a few bucks to stick it in a, a, a media mail box uh, and ship it out to you because it'll probably be some kind of media, right? A magazine, a book, uh, a record, a tape. Uh, along with some other little little artifacts, you know, to kind of spruce up the package. Uh, and there's it's not a this is not a promosm for all of you assholes out there that want to say fucking promosm. Uh, you're a promosm. I'm not. I'm not promoting anything. Uh, when you want some screamers, well, yeah, too. Who doesn't? You know, who doesn't want to make friends? I call them friends. In fact, from now on, I'm not going to call my subscribers friend uh, subscribers i'm not going to refer to them as subscribers from now on they're friends new friends viewers that kind of thing watchers i got watchers out there are you a watcher hello are you a watcher uh so yeah so there's that right but i think that uh that that we're going to do more moving the camera around the room and looking at stuff just means i gotta dust and vacuum more that's all I ain't no big i do it once a week uh, i may have to do it uh more we live in the desert so there you go and in a, a mobile home that's like a sieve mm. coffee good cooling down almost gone mm. Mm, mm, mm. That's just crazy stuff. Crazy taxi. Crazy. Let me plug my uh plug my cell phone in here so it can do its job the whole day through. My batteries are charged. I took the batteries out a couple of hours ago and uh put new ones in my mixer. And then of course had to restart my show. Uh, but my my batteries are charged and they're not even warm. That's great. I love new new tech. There's, there's so, so much of this new tech is just friggin' awesome, awesome sauce. So let me yank these bag trees out of here, and they can go in my charged battery pile. In fact, let me pop these guys in there and top these guys off. Let's top those two off. And then uh, once they're topped off, I'll pull all these batteries out, and we'll do that there. Ah, I love it. Uh, I totally love it. I just, I lo I'm going to do some great shots. Great. I can't wait till th next Thursday. Uh, maybe even this Thursday, we'll do a little preview of Thursdays. Uh, just like today was a preview of Wednesdays to come with the new graphics and sound and everything. Uh, and of course, the same old technical glitches. So uh, at some point, I'll get the the sound technical issues nailed. But for right now, I think it's going to pass. Uh, when I go live open mic night, that, you know, even if I have technical glitches there, I'm just going to, you know, reload, reload and shoot, you know, and that's it. And that's how I'll do that. <clears throat> so uh you know and i'll just expect them and be ready for them be ready for technical glitches and be ready to copy and paste shit and get a new stream going within a minute right uh and just have it there in the notes at the beginning of each uh in in the description of each video that if this fails be sure to come back and look for the follow-up live stream right because that's just the way it's going to have to be until i get it worked out and it may not even be me it just may be youtube fucking with me or their algorithms just screwing around or it just may be a tech issue on their end you know i don't i don't know anymore uh i don't care anymore as long as it doesn't fuck with me too much 
I'll just deal with the sound the way it is now. Mm. I don't like this sound. And there's that. Yep, yuppers. Yeah, I got that lava lamp a few months back um, because that corner there used to have this lamp in it that sits next to me. Uh, and uh, uh, you know what? It was that lamp was too big. It was taking up room to put more frames. So uh, on a on a wide shot, you'll notice that that whole corner is now full of, of frames, uh, including a family photo. Finally, now, I think I'm going to set two cameras in front of me uh, so that I can get uh, and have a, have a roaming camera that sits in front of me so that I can zoom in on parts of the room um, to use to do for my static shots here. <clears throat> So we will have three cameras in the room here and uh, my graphics and video feed. Uh, and then whatever else I can pipe through my graphics and video feed cameras and VCRs and that kind of stuff. Uh, I've already shown that I can send in stuff like a, a video tape. Uh, I, did a, I did a test and it seemed to work. Just dealing with another sound issue there. But it's all coming together. And I think season uh, season three is gonna not just technically be better, but it's gonna give us it's gonna give us more to do, you know, and it's gonna give the show more depth and, and color and uh more expertise uh and more technical finesse. It'll just be a it'll just be a lot of fun. Just loads of and loads of fun so we're coming up on finishing the fifth hour we're about 10 minutes south of the fifth hour mm -hmm. and if i got any any wall uh flies on the wall out there who want to chime in and tell me they're there somebody that i can't see on my counter then i will pick up my guitar and play a song before i go all right uh, I guess it's going to be the condition of my house and what I got to do here that's going to tell me whether or not I'm going to be bugging out of here soon or not. I'll probably just play it by ear and say, okay, time to go. Adios. Um, and then probably leave you with this shot because it's such a cool shot. But it, like everywhere you look around my room, is kind of like that you know i think the next shot i'll get is going to be that that tapestry there with the kennedys on it and my reel to reel and that'll look neat and uh, maybe what i can do is record one of those grateful dead shows onto uh reel to reel right and then just play it for you Boom, because I can pipe the sound out of that real easily and into my mixer here. That kind of shit's easy to do. So let's do something like that. I'll rec I should go out and get some uh, some of those brand new Radio Shack realistic uh, reel to reel tapes out of my shed and not only get some for the Big Sandy stuff that I want to put on for myself and for Big Sandy, but put on my the Grateful Dead shows that I went to when I was young uh, because I can find a few of those on the Internet Archive uh, and download them uh, as individual songs and then turn them into a, an actual long play and then uh, and then just record them straight on to my. Uh, right. Because what I can do is I can create a, a video like I do for my radio shows with the sound on there and some graphics uploaded onto my channel so that it's on my channel so that everybody can watch it. And then I'll play it from my channel through my stereo onto my reel to reel. 
and record it there. And then from there, I can play it on my reel to reel into my computer through my mixer, watch it on a video camera, and we can all sit and, and enjoy it together watching the reels spin, you know, and the incense burn and the sage and um, we'll, we'll flash up an occasional Grateful Dead photo, right? That'll be way fucking cool. Um, so yeah, tomorrow should be a a, a good show. Um, the last show of the week. The last show of the season. I am due to come back Monday morning live. Um, unless unforeseen or foreseen circumstances take their toll. And I am unable to. Uh, I got to go to the dentist on... Uh, thursday tomorrow after the show so uh the outcome of that uh i know i'm gonna have a tooth pulled at some point it may or may not happen tomorrow um but it probably will i could pull the tooth at this point um so uh, i guess the outcome of that visit and how i feel on monday is going to determine whether or not i i start the season monday or take a week off and work on some more graphics which is more likely because i really need to focus on graphics and if i'm not working on the show in the morning that frees up two computers and my phone to work on creating graphics right i can search stuff out on my phone while things are being saved and processed on the two computers so i can just book through stuff um so yeah season three tentatively starts monday um i may take time off not just to work on this sh show season three but to work on season one of uh open mic from the landers giant rock meeting room salu uh, so yeah and that's going to take some that's going to take some shoehorning to get that done and what i might do is if i'm up if i'm not up for doing the show on monday this show i might do a pilot of the open mic on monday night and i mean pilot by it may just be that one show and then wait a couple of weeks to get technically fit to do the rest right so uh a lot of things in the works uh it looks like we're going to have a chance to do more of this live stuff and i'm real excited about that because this it's not just challenging technically but it's really fun it's it's really fun technically you know and i i totally dig it uh I totally dig it. Yeah. I'm going to track my shipment here and see where we're at. Uh, still headed from North Palm Springs. So hopefully it'll be here before I've got to leave the house because I'll be out of the house for a couple of hours. Um, so there's that. And dang it, if I don't got to get gas in my big old giant 5.9 Magnum fucking V8 in that van. Uh, so I got to go out and spend a mint filling that thing full of petrol. That's always fun. Uh, so I don't drive it too much. Uh, like I said, I like to drive it on trips out to Landers and to, uh, Morongo Valley <laughs> over to the college and, you know, in the areas out here, I really cleaned it up yesterday because i'm hoping against all hope that the drive-in out here has their equipment fixed and they're going to be doing uh they're going to be doing movies soon yes 29 palms out here in the morongo basin has a drive-in theater and uh in the summertime they do two movies a night three or four nights a week um and i would love to be able to go there uh and 
not just hang out, but hang out and play the guitar, sing, hang out with David and his family, to go there and fucking put on a fucking show, go live from the drive-in, right, before the show. Or maybe go live from the drive-in and then mute the sound and aim it at just the van, right? And what's happening with the, with you know, and maybe put on some other audio or something. You know, everybody at the drive-in and we're listening to some Grateful Dead live shit. That would be cool too, you know, because it would have that same feel, you know, shakedown street, baby. So I'm totally into that. So yeah, the uh ah, the drive-in theater, you know, that's that's where it's at. I can't wait. Uh, this is a great drive-in theater. It's an old school place, old. It's got a little snack bar, pizza and popcorn and soda and stuff and a big screen and and uh surrounded by lots of trees. And uh everything is simulcast on stereo. Right. There's no speaker boxes anymore, which is kind of weird. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, if anybody knows of where to get any speaker boxes out there, drive in theater speaker boxes, uh, I'd love to get a couple. I'd love to get a couple of drive in theater speaker boxes and turn them into window hanging MP3 player speakers. Right. Wouldn't that be cool? So you could go to watch a movie and tune in the stuff on your phone and send it to this little Bluetooth stereo speaker that looks like, you know, the old drive-in theater speakers. Now, there is a million-dollar idea for somebody, right? That's something for, like, the new online Radio Shack stores. They make little retro vintage stereos. They need to make something like that, a window-hanging um, little MP3 uh a little bluetooth speaker thing that would be way fucking cool i'd 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 buy that for a dollar hell yeah so if you're just joining me uh i decided to switch my graphics of course i'm right here ha people i got new graphics so i've been playing around with them this week because uh possibly next week or the week after uh i'm going to be doing season three of this series and we're kicking it up a notch or two technologically right so uh if you've uh if you're stopping by things look a little different that's because i've been playing around with stuff and i'm real excited about it hey you're back what's up joel how's it going uh, i got another view out viewer out there a viewer or two out there uh, let me know who you are uh, i'd like to see what's going on see who we got going on out there uh, I'd really like to talk to a female viewer if we ever get them, get one family, friend, or other, uh, you know, and see what their take is on the show and uh, and what I discuss, right? Because I just kind of, I wing it. This is unscripted, unedited, unabashedly me, you know, unapologetically this guy. So, you know, uh, give me a little... Uh, Give me a little back and forth, a little, if you're a female audience member, let me know what's going on. All right. What do you think? Bong it. So, yeah, I had a little bit of time here sitting, uh, talking by myself, hanging out, discussing the things in the picture, uh, talking about being able to go into the playlist and watching any of the, uh, any of the live stuff, there, it's all on a playlist, season one, season two, upcoming season three will have its own playlist. I've got a video playlist. Uh, I've got playlists for different things, my concert and, and uh, open mic and bar venue, um, music trips, right? So I make little videos about that kind of stuff. The latest one is the White Rabbit. That one got yanked by YouTube because I used way too much of the 1933 uh, Alice in Wonderland movie. Uh, you know, my own excitement got the best of me and I used too much of it. Too much Alice. I did too much Alice, man. <laughs> but uh, so I took it and I edited out a lot of the Alice in the beginning and the end uh, and put the video, uploaded the video back and it has held its own. So hopefully it will be all right. Uh, and that's just the breaks. That's just the way it is. 
them's, them's, that's how the cookie crumbles. So um, I hope you're enjoying my my lava lamp graphics there. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these static shots in my room uh, with an incense burning or lava lamp or, you know, some kind of strobe lighting or psychedelic thing going on, you know, or uh, record some stuff onto my reel to reel and then we'll just kind of watch it and listen to it. You know, that'll be neat. Uh, Thursdays. This next season is going to be uh, Throwback Thursday. So we'll be doing slideshows, watching videos, listening to old audio, talking to people from my past via live uh, telecom telephone uh, stuff. And I've got a, an actual old telephone that I'm going to mic and we'll be doing uh, we'll be doing live you know via satellite type stuff and if i if if i work it out where i know who i'm talking to right then i'll be able to put them on a uh a, a picture in picture thing and pop them in and they can say hi how's it going man uh what's what's up you know and i can i can if i can't put them in live on a picture in picture then what I can do is put their photograph up or what's even more funny is a representation of them, you know, um, a little thing that this is their icon. This is them. So when you see this little thing sitting there, uh, that's them. Or I just zoom my camera in on a photograph of them when they were young, right up on my cork board, my um, my wall of the past. So, yeah, this show is really starting to grow and become its own kind of entity thing. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm super, super jazzed. Uh, like I said, it's morning time. My daughter's getting up to get ready for college. So at some point you're going to hear her uh, mucking about, moving around, skulking, doing around, looking for something to eat. Um, and and dogs dogs are now waking up too uh so that's that's pretty cool uh i get to have more dogs around me and they'll be awake usually when they're around me they're freaking asleep so yeah i'm really i'm really excited about this and then at some point oh 11 more photos from joey thank you joel that's awesome. I get to look at more photographs. And then when I get permission to use people's photographs, if they call, I can throw up their photograph in this little pop-up screen right here, right? Or put them in the big screen and put me in the pop-up, right? And then uh, when I'm talking to somebody in a text, a lot of times it's like, well, we, we see that they're writing and stuff and we kind of see a, a, a screen name, but who are they really? And then if I get permission from that person on the comments, I can throw up a picture of them, whether it's garnered from Facebook or from a message or, you know, from whatever. And that'll be cool. Or they just send me here, use this as my picture. You know, uh, it'd be really neat when I do this with people rather than talk to them and have a picture of them from now have them send me a message me a picture of them from when they were in the scouts or in high school or something you know that would be the shit so let's let's start thinking about that if you're a viewer and you're stopping by and you're doing comments look for an old photograph of yourself that you don't mind me putting up and then when you pop up here i'll go to my other computer and pop it up on the graphics screen all i got to do is go over to here and pop it up on this screen where the where the video is you know and then and that's it like that and it's 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 just so much more fun now you know i'm the i'm kid video man i love this shit i've been doing this shit back when videotapes you know weighed a fucking pound and they were you know you could hold it up into your in front of your face and your face would fucking disappear and and that's a George Lopez face, right? I'm talking a big face. And the tape would just totally, uh, you know, dwarf you. Uh, so I'm used to that kind of shit. And this new tech has just really got my got my juices flowing. So I'm using my low tech, uh, high def digital cameras here. They're not 4K, so you're not getting a clear picture. But I love it anyway because uh, I'm not a clear picture. 
not by any stretch of the imagination. And it gives me that aged look. It looks like an old picture, like it's coming through a, a camcorder, which is exactly what it is. We're looking through camcorders. I could throw up a, a, a date on there right now. The only bummer is, is that my date would be like after 2000, and that bums me out. So uh, what I'd like to do is be able to do a graphics overlay I don't know that I can do that yet. I might, but I don't know that I can do that yet. So if I could do that at some point, uh, I'd like to throw up some graphics on my screen that that say, you know, the, the time and the date like 40 years ago, because that's where I'm at. And that's why I'm, I'm reverse Van Winkle here. You know, I I fell asleep in the present and woke up 40 years ago every fucking day every day i come in here and and other people turn on the news and watch videos and memes and shit of the now and i'm in here watching barney miller and barnaby jones and you know magnum pi and shit you know shit from the past because that's where it's at for me there's i find very little entertainment uh very little entertaining uh, um, about entertainment today it's just, it's just there's just nothing there you know all right, check it out. Can you see my green bars here? See, my batteries are all charged, so I can pop them out of here now. So I'm going to remove my batteries, uh, and then I have charged batteries. And then what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to start every Monday. I'm just going to install new batteries in my uh, in my gear that takes batteries, my microphone, and my uh, my mixer here, because. Uh, you know, I don't want to have any audio dropouts, and that's where the batteries are. So there we go. Yeah, I'm getting super excited about going to the college. I'm getting super excited about the uh, the cameras showing up today. Um, about having a clean van and, and and having the windows spotless now. Well, not so spotless because of the, their old windows, so they've got a little bit of uh, calcification on them i'm going to give them another good cleaning uh probably with some clr uh and try to spruce them up a little bit um uh, and get get rid of some of that those little water spot calcification deals uh so that i can put on my vintage fucking stickers man i got these vintage bumper stickers that i've been dying i got them all to put on my fucking van and now with the help of my brother i can put them on and feel good about them not degrading in the sun and the rain right so i'm going to cover them with really good 3m clear tape uh, and just layer them up over the whole sticker area uh, and cover my stickers so that I'll have them for as long as I possibly can. And then probably probably as soon as I get them put on the van, I'll start buying more. Either to put on, to add to it, or to replace ones that may age, right? And then if they start to age, then I'll just start replacing them at all costs. You know, I think my... my uh, my one KMET sticker was uh, like 20 bucks, right? I paid as much for my sticker as I did my T-shirt. Uh, that's crazy. But, you know, that's that's what us crazy old weird bearded guys do. We get all googly about, uh, you know, old weird shit. Because we're just weird, you know. So, yeah, man, uh, I'm going to uh, wait until I get off of here and then mm -hmm. take a look at Joel's photographs and see what's going on. Uh, hi, baby. I'm on live, so be aware. Uh, yeah, I went into an argument with my wife. I, I was the mic was off and I was telling her I'm going to go back on live and she's ah, shut up. <laughs> she's like you're always doing that crazy shit what do you expect from a crazy old weird bearded guy i mean it's not like i'm gonna do normal stuff right fuck that would that would be normal uh it's pictures from the grand canyon and yosemite awesome do you mind if i share them in my youtube community page because i could create a post four pictures at a time and you know, 
caption them, you know, so if you've got anything you want to say about them, talk about them, caption, you know, tell me where each one was, but I'd love to post a couple of them if you don't mind. Um, in the community part of my YouTube channel, don't share the pictures with me. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. I'll just show like the, uh, you said some great ones of the Grand Canyon. I'd love to share those. Those were beautiful. So I'll, if, with your permission, I'd love to share those. Uh, you know, it's it's neat to to be in contact with someone who's out on a road trip right now. Uh, that's that's so cool. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let me know where you're going to eat in San Francisco. Everybody I know always says we got to go to the wharf, man, and get some chowder and some sourdough and all that. You know, so <laughs> I don't know. Let me know what your lunch plans are. Uh, I've never had a chance to go to the wharf. I've never had a chance to eat the fresh sourdough or to have chowder down there. You know, I'm one of the unfortunate souls, right? I'm always zipping through. We ain't got time to stop. Keep moving. Yep. Yepers. It's just crazy talk crazy absolutely yeah so how does the uh how does the lava lamp effect going on there and if i've got a fly on the wall viewer who hasn't checked in the deal is if a fly on the wall viewer checks in one that i can't see on my counter here then i will or one that hasn't commented yet uh right on i think it looks cool if somebody comments that i can't see or who hasn't commented yet then the the plan is that before i leave today within the next 45 minutes uh, i will try to muster up some voice and play some kind of song all right man hey take it easy have a good safe fun trip down the coast and in san francisco let me know how it goes man uh, i'll share a couple of photos man take it easy bro <laughs> Why do people do that? <laughs> oh, that's fun. Hi, Tootsie. You want to come here? Come here, Tootsie. Come here and say hi. Come here. Good morning, Tootsie. Come here. Come on. Let's get Tootsie up here and we'll switch over to Tootsie Footsie. Here's Tootsie Footsie. This is Tootsie Footsie. She's Tootsie. Tootsie Roll. She is a Chihuahua Dachshund purebred mix. Better go get him. Better go get him. Those dogs are wigging. Oh, uh, stretch. I better let Big Face out so she can go out and give her two cents. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> she's gonna, yeah, she's already got too much. She's all riled up. Let me see if I got a, uh, somebody showing up here delivering a package. Maybe that's it. Hello. Oh. Hello. Well, well, just somebody walking by. That's it. That's what makes uh, for such great live TV. Uh, of course, I call it TV because it's a tube, the boob tube. YouTube is a boob tube. YouTube. Because it's my television. YouTube. It's so obvious, it's ridiculous, right? But people don't understand it. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping uh, that at some point I'm going to get somebody that I know, uh, a female viewer on here, to talk to me about my show, right? Because I want to get views from kind of every angle, you know? And Lord knows I'm not going to get my daughter's view on this show. <laughs> she, she's asleep but she's not going to come on camera either uh i might at some point you know be able to get her on some kind of programming via telephone right because i can do that i can just have her call my landline and then mic the landline and then we can talk uh and then i can just put a picture up uh, either a representation of her or a photograph of i like to do like i said people if you're watching at some point find me on social media it's easy to do and 
send me a photograph of yourself as a youth, teenager, child, or whatever, your favorite photograph or whatever you got, something that I'm allowed to use um, on um, on channel here, on, on, on live. And then when I'm talking to you in the comments, I can post your photo up next to me. This is who I'm talking to. Uh, to me, it'll just make things more personable, more of a more of a community setting, uh, and I think that'll be a neat uh, a, a neat aspect to the show that will make it more than like a Joe Rogan thing. You know, I'd love to be able to sit in the room here and talk to people in the morning. Um, not being able to do that most of the time, it'd be neat to just have somebody get up and call me in the morning. All you know, groggy boys drinking coffee and want to sit and talk about something, you know. And uh, while I don't like to get too deep into politics and religion and government and corporations and that kind of crap, you know, if somebody's got a wild hair, occasionally I do and I, I vent about something, but I try not to dwell on it. Uh, you know, that'd, that'd be fine too, you know, or just to sit and talk with somebody from the past about the past, have somebody else tell a friggin' story uh, on occasion. Uh, that'd be cool. Uh, so yeah, let me see if I can get my, uh, no, I don't want that one. I want this one. And then, uh, let's go here and do this. And then can we switch? Uh, can we switch? How do we switch? Uh, on, on, um, on an M, man. Is that it? AFV. Right. Uh, beats me. I still got to figure this mixer out, you know. Hi, Bessie. Did you want to go outside? Are you ready to go outside? I better take the dog and put her out. She's all worked out. All worked. You too, Titi. I'm excited, Titi. Don't you just go? Can we go to you? Okay. Ready? Okay. Come on, Mark. Don't kill the big one. You got the, the boys? No? Ah, they're all outside. Everybody's outside, running around, pooping on the ground, boogity bow. All right, so, Lord Almighty, hey, there's one of them little digits, them dog midgets. It's a digit. All right, that does it for the coffee. Um, I've exceeded double rations already. And that's like way beyond. Uh, I may not get a nap today. I'm so freaking keyed up. But just in case, I'll throw my bedding into the uh, my uh, my bedding to go in the van, and maybe even the air mattress. Chuck that air mattress on the back bed and pump it up and just <clears throat> for a good hour. Well, I could sleep really hard in that van in the shade, window cracked open, Netflix on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I gotta get me a uh, a little twelve volt fan, something with a low drain on it. That thing buzzing with a little breeze. Oh, I could sleep in there for hours. I'd probably kill the battery. I'd be in there for so long. Uh but you know, an hour and a half at my daughter's campus. I've slept there before. I, I went to school there uh for two and a half years. So I know sleeping there on that campus on that parking lot. Uh, shit, I did it in my Geo Metro, which has got some pretty good leg room, seat all the way back, tilted, seat tilted all the way back. It was actually pretty comfortable. Uh, I'd sit in there and zone out on YouTube for friggin' hours in between classes or just lay down and pass out, you know. Yeah, I spent a summer doing a, a like a, a 12 to 2 class and then a 6 or 12 to 3 and then a 6 to 9 right and uh 5 
it's like four or five i think it was five days a week for like six weeks right and uh so uh i lived further away than we live now uh an extra 20 minutes or 20 or 30 minutes right and so that's why i bought the geo metro because it was really good on gas at, at one point i was getting 70 something per mile um going up and down uh the 395 right so i got this really cool car you know um great 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 to sleep in you know great to great to travel in um but just really 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 fun so i'm i'm used to sleeping on that uh on that campus there or going into the library and finding a place on one of those sofas in the library and grabbing a book opening a book setting it in your lap putting your sunglasses on and pulling your hat down and just <clears throat> just going out right and just just pull the hoodie down over your face and then just go out for a little bit you know you see a lot of that I could I could I could do some of that. So yeah, I'm gonna go to the campus, gonna go out doing some stuff today, gonna try to get over and see Bush. Um like I said, season three's opener may be on hiatus until the following Monday. So uh we may be off for a week while I retool my show, build myself a cabinet to house my new show. Um, season two, episode 33 is going to be tomorrow, which is gonna be one more episode than last season. And then I think we're gonna come back on Earth Day, the 22nd. Um, so we'll do season uh, three, episode one of the morning show on the 22nd of April. Uh, we're not going to be here for 420 anyway. And hopefully I can talk somebody into going out to the 420 show at uh, Pappy and Harriet's. Uh, a week from Friday, I mean, a week from Saturday. Uh, and this next three Fridays out here at the local casino, we've got tribute bands um, every Friday for three Fridays. We've got the Eagles tribute band and Ario Speedwagon tribute band. And then uh, uh, what else did we have? Uh, ah, some other fucking tribute band, right? Um, but they all three sounded cool. So it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll go check them out. Um, so if I can get out to, um, Eagles, um, Friday, I may not be feeling up for that one. If I get that tooth yanked tomorrow, but then, you know, every time I've had a tooth yanked, I never wind up taking the pain pills and it only bugs me for about a day, you know, about a day after the shit wears off. It, it bugs me a little bit, but I never usually have to take a pain pill. Um, I think once or twice I've taken uh, a pain pill the day after because um, it was just kind of annoying more than painful. Um, so we got REO and then uh, I'll have to write the other one and to see who that is. But yeah, I'm thinking pretty much I'll spend this next week uh retooling for this show <clears throat> season three and that means creating video graphics uh, opening sequences uh for the live stuff closing sequences uh, trying to finish off the sunday morning show so i can get that done and out of the way and then just start bringing you you know okay it's sunday here's sunday morning with some more sequences uh, so yeah, uh, what did we got going on, um, today is growth. 
and yesterday was Landers. I'm just writing down my T-shirt uh, that I wear because I I try not to copy, you know, wear the same T-shirt twice in one season. Uh, next season, season three, I'm hoping that that's going to be it. This this season's got one extra episode tomorrow than last season. Last season was 32. This season's 33 tomorrow. Uh, unless something happens and I'm not here. Next season, I'd like it to be double. I'd like to be like 64 episodes. So I can just continue, continue, continue. I think there we're going to revisit all of my shirts and try to go back and do all of my shirts and not repeat one shirt through the whole 64 70 whatever the episode whatever the season becomes um maybe it'll it'll just be okay look i've reached the limit of my shirts the season's over at 120 episodes right because uh, i'm already at over 70 shirts uh I just love talking about my shirts. It's like it's like a Scrooge stacking up his gold coins, right? Uh, that's me with my shirts. <laughs> I go into my drawer and fiddling with my file of shirts. Uh, yeah, my wife's right. I'm a fucking kook, and I love it. Uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So yeah, uh, Earth Day, 2024, is going to be. Episode one of season three of this show, Mornings with Crazy Old Weird Beard Guy. All right. Um, I don't think that between now and then I'm going to get to 100 subscribers. I'm averaging about one subscriber every two or three days, which is pretty damn good. I mean, that's phenomenal in my book. Uh, I've got a I've got a great growth factor for somebody who is not viral by any stretch of the imagination, right? I'm just some guy, some old freak prattling on about nothing, right? Yet here I am. Every once in a while, I get a new subscriber. Oh, my coffee's gone. Oh, oh this coffee. Can I? What a beautiful day. Yeah, it's all... Uh, it's all muckety muckety mucked, but it says what a beautiful day. And it's got a rainbow on it. That rainbow on the handle, that handle hurts. It's not, it, it, it's round this way, right? But it's not round this way. The handle is not uh, round. So when you hold on to it, it's got these sharp edges and it's not fun to hold on to. It's not my favorite cup to drink from, but it's a beautiful day. And I've got my growth shirt on that I haven't worn yet. And it says, grow through what you grow, grow through what you go through. And uh, that's pretty cool. I love these Walmart t-shirt messages. You know, uh, I'm not going to wear, you know, any of their other weird stuff promoting, um, <clears throat> you know, bands and that kind of, kind of weird, you know, or something with a skull on it or something. That's just not me. That just ain't me. Uh, but I do like their weird, kitschy, oddball shirts. Uh, tomorrow is my last day to wear a new shirt. So I will pick out something special. Something special that reaches back to my past. Something that I haven't worn at all. Something new, right? And then I get to go and start looking at my T-shirts for how I'm going to do season three with my shirts. Am I going to have a specific shirt for a specific day? You know, is my shirt for this Monday going to be like an attitude shirt? This is what kind of attitude I have for this week. You know, is it going to be like a concert T-shirt or a venue shirt on one day? Is it going to be like a throwback Thursday shirt? I'm going to wear something nostalgic. Betamax or underdog or something, right? So yeah, um, that's gonna be that's gonna be one of those things that I get to do uh, is is plan my shirts with my shows. I get to plan my shows better. They won't be scripted. They won't be, you know, like this. We're gonna we're gonna start this and we're gonna go to the sixty seconds and then we're gonna cut and we're gonna go to this. We're not gonna do that. We're going to get on. We're going to talk for as long as we want to talk. And then we're going to put on an old time radio show on Wednesday. 
and then it'll play. I might pause it. I might talk during it. Um, we might lose sound and I'll have to come back. You never like today. Um, and then we'll, we'll finish with the show and then we'll talk about something. It may or may not have to do with what we just heard. Uh, and I'll do that for the movies and the TV stuff that we do Mondays and Tuesdays, the slideshows on Thursdays, you know, I mean, it's just going to be kind of a, a huge expansion on how this show started. This show started with me sitting in, in, in this room on a huge wide angle shot, um, fishbowl style with me just sitting in one little chair uh, on the floor, little, little tiny low chair on the floor. And then I just started introducing stuff. And, and now we've gotten to this, right? Me and my, uh, me, you know, you couldn't blind, you, you could blindfold me with dental floss, right? My eyes are always such slits, right? I can't help it. You know, that's just the way I am now. You know, my eyes are always just fried, you know, just friggin' Just friggin' fried. What do we got here? Yeah, we got my photographs there from Joel. Uh, Facebook message. I got nothing from. I got nothing from my delivery, and I got nothing in a text about my uh, my cameras, Walmart stuff. But they should be here in time. Okay. Totally. Yeah. So there's some live TV for you. Opening the door, doing all that. It's on its way to North Palm Springs. It's just on its way. It's on its way. Now, of course, it'll get out here, right? And then FedEx will. They'll punch it in the computer. Okay, I'm ready to scan this. And where do I deliver it to? And the the they'll say address, you know, uh, address C has moved. No, ch and it's bullshit. It is bullshit. It's just bull. It's always bullshit. It's always a computer error. You know, we don't get post office mail here, so sometimes things run amuck with the deliveries, like my computer. It got came and then it went back and then I had to get another one sent out and then they delivered it and they delivered it to the, the mobile home out on the corner. And I literally had to go out with a photograph of the doorstep of where this thing was sitting and match the picture to the doorstep. And, and lo and behold, there it was. And then, you know, abscond with my own computer, hoping to not look like, um, you know, a doorstep friggin' UPS thief. Uh, I just, uh, It just it's crazy. It irks me. Hey, Tootie Pooty. Hi, Oliver. Why do our voices get high when we talk to our dogs? Why we do baby talk? Because we love them like babies? I don't know. I don't know, you know. I just don't know. You're not, I'm going to do that whole lava lamp thing again because it just looks so cool. Natalie, did you see my shot here? Is that neat? That's that's pretty cool. So I'm going to do that when I'm sitting here talking. I'll have a shot every week. I'll like do a different shot, you know. Aiming at the, my picture board or my stereo or my reel to reel and put something on the reel that we're listening to. I think that'll be visually uh, attractive, you know. That'll be fun. And it'll be fun for me to, to, to set up these little visuals, you know. Open up my cabinet and put it in on, on my set of coffee cups or something. That'll be cool. That's awesome. Cool beans. So uh, we're going to be leaving early today. What time is early? 15 minutes early. Sound good? You'll be ready. You just, you like to procrastinate. So just get ready now. And, huh? So there you go. And don't procrastinate. And then if you need something to eat, let me know. And I'll, oh, uh, 
Well, then, uh, then get it on. Do uh, whatever girls do, put your face on or, you know, you know, shave your tongue or whatever girls do in the morning. And then, uh, yeah, we'll boogie on out of here about 10 or 15 minutes early, baby. And then I might just stay there. Well, I didn't get gas yesterday. So, so we're, and we're taking my car because mom's going to be gone. She's going to look at another house to go play with. So, so yeah. Oh, and I'm still live. Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm still here. In fact, let me do a little, uh, here. See, look, I got a picture in fiction and I can see both. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I'm going to just kind of hang out here and do this until you're pretty close to being ready to go, which is what, about uh, an hour away? 20, 40 minutes away? Time to go now? Or am I back? Can I shoot it? Uh, can I shoot? Hi, oh, Sam. Stop looking cute. I need a Sam cam. That's what I need. I need a Sam cam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll try to get. Uh, I'll try to get. You know, permanent cameras set up on different parts of the room. Wow, so fucked up my floor is the dog. A little tiny dog just walked by my camera and that wiggle was the floor. That's fucked up. Uh, but if I can have a little spot, you know, we can go, okay, here's the lava lamp cam, the lava cam, you know. Um, I'll pipe th stuff through uh, an old 1-1 one -one screen camera so it gets... The screen turns into a square and it looks visually older, right? That'd be cool too. Pipe stuff through one of my old uh, 1982 Sony Trinicon cams, right? And that's going to give us a great old black and white, grainy, uh, just a really fucked up picture. That's going to be cool. You know, that'll be neat. So, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to kind of hang on with you uh, for the next 20 minutes or so uh, before I head out of here for the day. And by that, I mean get dressed and go to the campus. And uh, even if I'm just hanging out in my van, which I wish I had had my van when I was going to school you know, for two and a half years back then, oh, that would have been a dream, you know, um, and live close, you know, so not only could I go there and just, eh, I'm just going to hang out at the campus for the day, but it was like when it cost me an arm and a fucking leg to drive over there, you know. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, man, let me take a look at these uh, photographs real quick that Joey sent. And uh, can I turn them this way? Yeah, here we go. Oh, that's beautiful, man. That's fucking beautiful. Let's take this one this way. Wow. So these are the Can Granions, man. These are the, this is the Can Granion. Totally. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's totally bitching. Oh, yeah. Is that a house or a fort or something? That is fucking bitching. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Hey, all right. There's Joel. What's up, Joey? What's going on, dude, bro? All right. See, now we're, we got a connection, man. Now we know each other, bro. What's up? That's awesome. That is awesome, dude. I love your hair, man. That's fucking cool. That is fucking cool. And the natural goatee. That's bitching. I will not ever share your photograph unless you wish. But we'll have to, if you're going to be on a lot, let's pick out a representation of you so I can throw that up on the screen uh, when I'm hanging out chatting with you because that'll be cool. 
right? Uh, if you got any artists, friends, have them draw something up that says you, right? A caricature or, or a, a sketch or something. Uh, I used to have as my YouTube uh, icon, it used to be a, a self-portrait sketch that I did of myself. Uh, and that was, eh, it was okay. It served its purpose until I really got into the whole production end of all of this and i could do graphics and all of that shit so yeah i'm real i'm real excited about uh being able to have this kind of communication with people you know this is fucking awesome you really look good in that uh coat there with that background you know that's awesome man that's awesome sauce ah, i recognize this is that bridal veil falls it looks like bridal veil falls that's beautiful. That is beautiful. I remember that place. Yeah. What do we got here? Oh, that's awesome. Great stuff. And another great shot of you there next to Half Dome. Beautiful. Very photogenic there, Joey. Good stuff. And your friend takes a good photograph. That's uh, that's nice, man. That's very cool. Thanks for sending these photographs. I really appreciate this. You know, this is fun. I haven't been there in so long. I'd love to go there. I'd love to take the uh, wife and daughter and 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 a, her friends and other friends and dogs and just make a whole fucking thing of it. But I got that whole reunion in 2025 hanging over my head, and that is uh whatever time I'm not spending on YouTube, I'm going to have to devote to that. At some point, it's going to take up all of my extra time. As The closer we get to it, the more time it's going to take up. Wow, that's great. Beautiful photographs, man. Thank you so much. Oh, that's a great one. That long shot of you with that huge freaking crag there. That's beautiful. The big one behind it. Yeah, I remember that spot. I remember walking around down there in the valley for hours uh, while my my father and his girlfriend, my my friend's mother, were off in Oakland looking for freaking drugs. That's great, man. Thank you so much for sending these. I will not share any of the ones with you, but I will post some of these. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to be able to post eight of these in the YouTube community page. That's friggin' awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. That's cool. That is awesome. We got another viewer. Is that somebody coming back or is that somebody new? Because uh, I'm going to be headed out of here in about 15 minutes. I am going to start getting my act together. Hey, yo, what's up? I was just looking at your uh, your photographs here. Those are very cool, man. I was digging on those. You're very photogenic. I like your hair. Uh, you in that coat out there against those mountains is just very, very cool. Uh, yeah, I remember all those shots um, from Yosemite, going out there with my father and his girlfriend, who was my best friend's mother. That was a weird situation. But uh, I never told you my uh, my Grand Canyon story, right? So it's like 1974, right? Uh, and it's post-wounded me, um, pre-exile, exodus thing. And we are, my father is doing a project in arizona from pasadena going all the way out to arizona at the grand canyon to the indian reservation out there and um to meet up with brother geode who was the the uh the monk at the monastery out there right and so we were driving out there to see this guy and to interview him and talk to him and do this this uh this thing i think they were doing another psa another public service announcement for the uh for the radio like the one that we did with uh with buzz aldrin the astronaut uh when i got to meet him 
Um, so we're out there. We go out there to meet Brother Geode, right? But on the way, we're, we leave late at night. So we get out there early, early in the morning to uh, the Grand Canyon. And when we get there, everything is covered in fog. You can't see a goddamn thing. But we're right at the edge of one of these places at the Grand Canyon where it just kind of goes off, right? And at this point, I'm uh, I'm going to say I'm like five or six years old, probably six years old. And uh, I like I got to go take a piss because I I wake up in the in the car, you know, and it's like man, I got to go take a piss. And so I walk off and I go and I'm standing there in the fog taking a leak right just pissing and uh while i'm standing there as a little kid taking a leak i realized that in front of me is this little lip on the ground below me and i it just dips away but it's so foggy that as it dips away everything just kind of becomes fog right uh it was snowing wow yeah when i saw it was all covered in fog and so I'm standing out there taking a piss as a kid and I zip myself up and I'm looking out over into this, this, this abyss of fog that starts like two inches down this little ledge. And I'm like, wow, what is going on down there? And I'm standing, there as a kid waving my hand at the fog blowing, trying to get this fog to move so I can see, you know, what are there crickets or rabbits or something, you know, buzzing around down here in this little fog ledge. And as I'm leaning out like this, I'm just about ready to step off this ledge into whatever's there. And I, my father grabs me by the back of the neck and yanks me back and says, that's the Grand Canyon. And I'm like, well, what's the Grand Canyon? And he's just like, oh, man. And we're there long enough for the fog to dissipate as the sun rises. Right. And I walk, he walks me back over there and looks me over the edge. And it's like a hundred foot drop down into nothing. Just, you know, uh, <laughs> And I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's weird when you get there and you can't see nothing. You know, it's like the clouds are like right there in your face, you know. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it because that's one of those memories that I have, one of my young memories that I have about almost dying, you know. Uh, and boy, did I have a lot of those growing up. <laughs> that was great. You know, uh, but that's my Grand Canyon story there. I, I got a Grand Canyon story. We made it to see Brother Geode uh, at the monastery and um, he was a monk. He was in the robe with the thing and the bald spot on the head, the full on uh, Presbyterian or whatever monks those were. Um, and uh, the one thing that I remember uh, about him, other than the way he looked and acted, uh, was this room that he had right inside the rectory of the church that was it's like they had the book the the bookstore and the other little parts of right inside the church but they had this big room right and it used to be an office or closet or something but it was fucking huge and inside this room was wall-to-wall -wall candy shelves uh, big containers you could open up and reach your hand in and pull stuff out and he had that for all of the children of the reservation who would come there to church and he would offer them okay well thanks for coming you know why don't we go in here and we can each pick out a piece of candy and of course we were kids so we got to go in and pick out a piece of candy while we were there uh and that was really neat he was a really yeah. nice sweet man um and uh and he was the first probably probably the first religious figure that i that i encountered uh, as a child of course traditional religious figures right i had already encountered uh, native american religious figures uh, at about the same time uh, going back to pine ridge and south dakota and wounded knee and niobrara and all of that where my father's family is from right uh and then uh you know, dealing with all of the other counterculture aspects of of religion. Uh, so, but this was my first, you know, real uh, religious experience. You know, going to a church and talking with someone, uh, a man of God. Um, 
and it was cool i mean it really did put me at ease as, as a kid i mean the, the the other i guess religious figure that i knew as a kid which had nothing to do with religion it had more to do with death was a mortician that my father knew uh that he used to go buy and sell drugs with back in the 70s early 70s and he was a mortician from a family of morticians he lived in a mortician home a big mansion that had the uh the uh the the morgue and undertaking facilities and the uh crematory it had everything there on this property in his home or on the property it was crazy to think that their whole lives revolved around death and dying and, and all of that but he was i in my in my eyes he was like the first religious kind of person because death and religion and all of that kind of intertwined um but he was a weird guy he had a weird smile uh he was full-blown redhead uh he had a really pencil thin mustache and and pointed i mean pointed goatee like like you would see in the anim animated devil right any any version of an animated devil that's what his mustache and goatee looked like and then he had red hair cut really short and had the little widow's peak i mean he was really really spooky looking dude right and i was a little kid i was like five years old when i met this dude and we, i met him my father going to do a drug deal at this this family home mortuary this big it looked like um if you're familiar with disneyland and uh the haunted mansion it looked like the haunted mansion out front that's what it looked like and it was a spooky place a big giant porch with with rockers and swing and it was really old school up there in uh, pasadena it had been there forever um this family had was was were pasadena morticians i don't remember their name but they were pasadena local morticians there for like probably a century right uh, just a weird weird experience in fact uh in my when i was at the college out here to copper mountain i had to go to one of the requirements in one of my classes the death and dying class that my daughter got to take with the same instructor i told that story already but one of the things i got to do uh was instead of having to go to a mortuary uh which i've been to enough mortuaries in my life uh and do all of that part of that class i was able to just write an essay about my experience in a mortuary and i didn't want to write about one of the horrible experiences being in a mortuary having to be with a friend dealing with a loved one or having to go myself and deal with uh the death of a loved one so i decided to write about that evil looking mortician dude right and my dad taking me to do a drug deal with this mortician and that was my first experience seeing the embalming stuff and dead bodies and and the the caskets lined up in the rooms to view to find out if you wanted to buy this one or that one i mean you could literally get in these caskets and try them out i don't like the way this feels i don't want to lay here for the rest of my eternities i mean it was a weird fucking house to go walk through it was scary as a little kid but uh the dude was all right. I mean, he was a cool dude, you know. Um, my father didn't hang out with too many people who weren't cool at the time. So, yeah, uh, that was that was a weird, a weird experience. And there's a Pasadena. You guys were some Pasadena. There's a Pasadena story for you. Um, speaking of Disneyland, are you guys going to do any of the amusement parks in California while you're here? uh it doesn't do it doesn't cost anything to walk through downtown disney or downtown um universal studios where it's pretty much just kind of shopping and dining and stuff uh i guess it is kind of expensive to go to most of the parks uh you guys are going to probably pass through ventura and uh in valencia and go through where six flags magic mountain is right um and then if you come back through southern california of course there's knott's berry farm and disneyland and california adventure and all of the other little 
Nakukra Mall that's down here that's fun to go check out. You were over by the beach. I don't know if you got to go to Santa Monica Pier and check that out. Uh, that was always one of my fun places to go as a kid. Um, my mother was known for just taking whatever she could find, borrow from anybody, and go out there and fish right off of that pier. We'd show up in our motorhome. We'd wake up. Uh, no amusement parks, right on. Uh, any concerts or anything in your future? Um, but, you know, the Santa Monica Pier was always great. Walk out there. We'd show up early in the morning, you know, wake up in the motorhome. Where the hell are we? Oh, shit, we're at the beach. Uh, and we'd take hot chocolate and a bucket and a line. I mean, literally just a line with some hooks on it that she'd get from somebody. Um, and, uh, yeah, your plate's probably full enough with all that driving, right? You probably can't spend too much time in one area. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, if you do happen to make it through this area, there's always something kooky going on. You might be able to take part in something. Uh, but uh, yeah, but don't plan anything in my account. Don't go out of your way. It's just if you happen to be going through and you can spare a few, you know, I don't think we're too far off your path if you're taking the 10. Uh, looks like somebody else is there. <clears throat> if I got a fly on the wall, let me know who you are. Uh, and we'll get into doing something different. Uh, I said that I'd play a song if I get some unknown to uh all right well i hope you're gonna go through uh come through joshua tree uh, i don't know what day or what your schedule would be like i mean friday nights pretty close to here there's there's open mic stuff uh sunday during the day there's open mic sunday night there's open mic monday night there's open mic um there's a lot of stuff going on out here and then uh on the 20th of course you probably won't be out here still around then but the 20th there's a a show at pappy and harriet's and then anytime you're out here and if you're actually you know decide that you're going to stay the night you know then you might check out a uh one of the local venues for a show because that'd be fun you know but yeah if you come through hang out i'll buy you guys lunch we'll chill out for a little bit have some coffee or yerba mate or something leaving you're leaving the 15th from arizona i presume going back to the east coast so you could be through here in any time over the next five days well cool if you happen to come through here over a weekend that's usually when there's really good stuff going on oh you're leaving from la on the 15th oh okay so then you might be through here on the 15th or 16th then maybe is that what you're saying so yeah either way that'd be cool you know and like i said if you can afford the little extra weight uh on your plane ride back you know i'd love to send you back with a little vintage memorabilia you know if you're going to stop by what the hell you know i mean i don't i don't do this often i'm not a you know uh a youtube aficionado but if you're gonna if you stop by and you're hanging out you know shoot me a message on what kind of music you like and stuff and i'll try to dig out some 45s you can sit here and fucking thumb through 45s and eight tracks pick out a couple of cool items you know i know you can play 45s i don't know if you can play eight tracks you can probably find an eight track player over in your neck of the woods and you know fix it up take it to one of your local gadget shops and have it lubed and tuned and shit but those are always fun uh i got into eight tracks on accident just like i got into most of this shit it just all of a sudden kind of you know snowballed into all of this uh but yeah man that'd be cool that'd be cool just shoot me a message let me know when you're gonna about when you're gonna be buzzing through and if i got no plans we will hook up and i'll we'll do some lunch or dinner or something or, or I'll rearrange my schedule, you know. Um, it's quite possible I could find you some accommodations uh, when you pass through. So, yeah, let me know ahead of time, you know, a day or so ahead of time when you're going to be here, when you're for sure going to be here. And I'll try to line something up for you guys to check out. 
Um, so you're not just, you know, kind of going at it blind. Uh, anytime I go to a place, I'm always, I always over research a place. By the time I get there, I know where everything is. You know, do you know where you're going, honey? Oh yeah, it's right over here. How do you know that? Well, cause I looked at the satellite photos and memorized shit. I'm just a kook that way. Uh, so yeah, not everybody's like that. So if you want, let me know and I'll yeah, line a couple of things up to you to check a couple of things out if you want, if you so desire, you know, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 11 o'clock. Hey, hi, howdy. What do you, what do you, what the, it got late all of a sudden. Uh, all of a sudden I'm pushing into a sixth hour and I should not be. This is part two of episode 32. Um, crazy old weird bearded guy in the mornings doing, um, old time radio Wednesdays. And most of the morning here, I've been talking with Joel through the comments about um, his trip running around California. He's over here from the East Coast. So uh, if I really get lucky, uh, I'll get a visit from my new friend and um, and hang out and have a drink, have something to eat, do something, chill out. You know, if you guys got time, have a little food. You know, my wife is an excellent cook, as am I. So you never know. If I got enough heads up, you know, uh, I found out just over the last few years that I'm really good at entertaining and I love it. You know, I love to be a host. So hit me up. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up for the day. Uh, I'm going to do a bong hit from the road because that's what I do in the mornings. I'm, I do coffee bong hits and conversation and I'm out of coffee and I got no more time for conversation. So there you go. I'm going to put on some morning graphics as we exit once again, because I can, I have the technology to feed in uh, stuff. So I'm going to do it. Uh, old time radio graphics episode uh, i don't want that i don't want that man i don't want it yeah um, what is this oh that's i'll just use that <laughs> i can just pop this puppy up on the screen make myself go away nice and clean all right, people. Uh, yeah, bye, Joel. Thanks so much for hanging out and uh, chilling, telling me about your uh, your trip. I can't wait to hear more. And hopefully, if I get real lucky, meet you in person. That'd be awesome. I hope I don't weird you out because I'm a weird guy. Uh, that's just, just the way I am. Um, I weird out everybody that I meet in person until they get to know me. Of course, my wife and daughter, they still think I'm weird. So <laughs> there you go. All right. I am going to go to this camera here. And I am going to do, God, this is so cool. I'm going to make this loop and then do that. All right, people. Um, once again, thank you so much for coming by. Um, I had a lot of fun this morning. and. Um, yeah, tomorrow will be my last episode of season two. So it's going to be weird. It's going to be sad. And I probably won't see you for a week. I'm going to take a hiatus and go do some technical stuff and get shit ready for, uh, for season three. Because I don't want it to look like this, you know, with the whole untitled video play thing going on there. I want it to look, I want it to look fucking real. All right. All right, people, you take it easy, and I will see you uh, soon. Adios.